See you when we see you, Ed. Um, let's 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 play some Soul Ash, shall shall we? I mean, it's a float plane. the uh, The difference in travel time is almost five hours instead of uh, thirty four minutes. <laughs> so it's like it, it'll, it'll take me about an hour from walking out of my apartment to get to Victoria. Just because I don't want to listen to his mom babble about how she ate cookies and then her head hurt the next day. Fucking... I did some math wrong at lunch and I almost died. Like, and, and you're complaining about cookies making your head hurt. Bad. No, I'm not going to answer the question for the 14th time, lady, about how. Do, am, am I on pills yet? Or am I still giving myself insulin? Like, I wish they had different names. Uh, let, let's, let, let's, let's play this video game. So th this is Soul Ash 2. Uh, Soul Ash 2 is a uh, very heavily <laughs> adventure mode inspired roguelike. Um, to the point where, well... I assume I stole this character. I'm just going to plot that. Um, so right down to the point where if you play a lot of Dwarf Fortress, this is going to look kind of familiar. Um, but I am of the opinion that it is good to imitate good art. Dwarf Fortress is good art, and I am absolutely okay with games imitating its ideas. Um, now, when I click this Create button, you're going to see... Uh, world generation that is very Dwarf Fortress like. Now it's not anywhere near as in depth of world generation. Um, it generates towns in a very similar way and time runs in a very similar way. Uh, but the maps don't have the same kind of height maps. There are some Z levels, but they're nowhere near as complicated. Uh, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, the developer of this game is extraordinarily active. This is his second game. Um, the kind of caveat that I like to give people, because I see this come up a lot, is didn't he abandon the first game? Not really. <laughs> the The first game was a game that was largely done by 2019 and didn't release onto Steam until a little bit later. And the first game was in development for like six something years, uh, mostly on itch. And the release version on Steam was just it getting graphics, basically. Uh, it did get, like, half a year to a year of support after that. Um, and he's going to make sure that it continues running, which is fine. And then when started working on the sequel. And I think that the way people are used to games releasing on Steam is they assume that this is, like, the beginning of years of support. Which isn't really the case. Um, in a lot. In, like, just, that's just not how games always work. So this is a more of a successor sequel to the first one. It's not really a like um, a story sequel or a world sequel. It is more of a kind of expansion on ideas from the first one. The first one was a very static world with a lot of neat mechanics and um, kind of an overarching goal of becoming a god and killing the entire population of the world. Uh, this game is a much more mundane kind of theme where you are a peasant kind of rising up within the world and it's got a lot of mountain blade kind of stuff going on with like the idea of eventually having armies moving around in the overworld um, and it uses a lot of mechanics and stuff from the first game so yeah imagine re releasing a mostly finished product tweaking it with balances balancing and then moving on yeah um the first game used a lot of assets from a asset store as well as a complete tile set that was drawn by an artist uh the assets being the ui elements as far as i know are largely just purchased from unity or from a asset store i don't actually know which one but he the UI for the first game was largely purchased from an asset store. This one doesn't have any of that, so all of the UI is built from the ground up. I think there might still be some, like, remnants of that 
um, in like icons and things, but largely this game is using wholly custom content, which is cool. Because similar to um, Dwarf Fortress, this is a game made by a uh, a programmer, not an artist. So the original game releasing on Steam released on Steam so that he could pay his artist to make the um, tile set. And I did an interview with him a while ago, and I did a second one, which I never ended up releasing because the audio just didn't, it wasn't good enough to really release in an audio format. I did put the audio up on my Patreon uh, if you want to go find that for a dollar, but largely his description of it was for the first game he was working uh, a, a day job an afternoon job and working on the game just to pay for the artist and also finish the game so i will say if you are curious about this game uh go try the demo if you're worried about a game like this getting finished Go look at the mod support for the first one because this already has the same mod support um, or the same level of mod support. So what I will say about this game is this. If for some weird reason, which this won't happen because he has like a year's worth of runway at least uh, to keep working on it. If for some reason the game suddenly stopped being developed, um, the mod support is already enough to make this game worth purchasing. That's me. Let's generate this world and uh, see what we land on, and then we'll start messing about. So what 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 you do is you 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 you've you selected your world, you you you've you, you've picked everything, and then I think we just click we type in a name for it. So let's just call it Hello World, and hit save. And this is why I say this looks like Dwarf Fortress. It's also its own engine, so it's not like it's on Unity or anything odd. You like the jungle biome? Yep. Also, if somebody wants to be rad, Diamond Destruct has done so much for this stream, he deserves a sub and can't afford one. So if anybody wants to gift Diamond a sub, I, I will be eternally grateful for you for the next 30 days until I ask somebody to do this again. <laughs> the thing with this game is that uh, you just have no idea what to do because you're not building a... Uh, because you're not building a place like DF. Um, So... For me, the way I approach a game like this, thanks, Gunna Tank. The way I approach a game like this is, yeah, you have no idea what to do, but you you have a starting town in this game. So that's your base. So if you don't know what to do, go back to the starting base because the starting base has enough things to keep you alive. This is a game with a hunger meter. This is a game with a uh, like a survival mechanics. Uh, this is a game with um, family mechanics. So you have a lineage. And this is also a game with adventure mode-esque persistent worlds. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this is your difficulty here. Um, the default intended difficulty for this game is literally Dwarf Fortress adventure mode. So also... Um, sorry, Atur, who's the developer of this game, but um, you've screwed something up. You still have the Twitter logo here. <laughs> I don't think that's current, but I, I agree that the new logo sucks. <laughs> Fight the power. Um, yeah, it, it, you got drinks and everything. Um, so this is your difficulty screen. So I will just simply read the bullet points here. Permanent character death. So when you die, you're dead. However... It does the adventure mode thing. And this is why I think this is really cool because there is almost no other games out there that do the adventure mode thing in this type of game. By that, I mean a traditional roguelike type of game or shall I say a roguelike type of game. It's an X logo. Ha! Why isn't the X logo? Has, has anybody actually submitted that as a bug report yet? Shrini, because I really hope somebody's done that. The new 10 logo. I, I, I like that everybody's started calling it 10. I, I, like, I, no, I, I, hmm. 
I still prefer to call it X, X the, the social media service previously referred to as Twitter. Is it like CDDA? It has CDDA-like mechanics, although I should probably answer these questions after the ad break. Am I a bad person if I want to skip the second game? Uh, you like the game and you can't... Is it a... Are you a bad person if you want to skip to the game? Um, no, but that would make you a very typical YouTube viewer. <laughs> I won't say it'll make you a bad person because like that, that's silly, but um, but it does make you a very YouTube typical viewer. Yeah. But uh, you're watching a restream of a Twitch stream, so if you want to skip to the game, I guess at this point, pause the game, go to Steam, or pause the stream rather, mute it even better. Go to Steam and download the demo. Mastodon and Fediverse for the win. I mean, Stract lets you search the Fediverse exclusively. It has a toggle for that. So instead of using Google like a normie, when you open up your web browser and decide that you're going to go search for something, you could just at, like filter to only the Fediverse on your optic. Not that anybody knows what the fuck I'm talking about, but. And I've just realized that I've now closed my chat. Whoops. There we go. I now have my chat back. I can see again. Forgot what the Fediverse is? That's okay. <laughs> All right, so. Is this game like CDDA? It has some CDDA-like mechanics. Am I going to say it's like CDDA? No. <laughs> uh, first off, because it's a fantasy game. Second off, because it's made by one person and no, you can't make cat girls. And third, because I... Nothing really... CDDA is kind of in a realm similar to Dwarf Fortress where there really isn't anything like it. Like, this, this has a very similar structure to Adventure Mode. Is it like Dwarf Fortress? No. What is this search? And uh, you were in an ad. It's Stract. Stract.com. It's a, it's a search engine made by one dude in his basement, and it's open source, so you can go look at the source code. And I'm trying to use it in place of Google. And believe it or not, aside from having to use, like, image search, because it doesn't have any image search, it's been quite consistent. And when it doesn't find something, I don't have to scroll down as far as I would on Google to avoid the sponsored posts and ads. So when Strack doesn't find something as the top result, the seventh result is the thing that I'm looking for. And if I type the same thing in on Google, the seventh result is the first result that isn't a sponsored post or an ad half the time. <clears throat> so it's not as far to scroll. Um, and the artist formerly known as Prince is the new Twitter. And the, I, you know, I, 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 I listen to talk radio because I'm an old human being. Uh, and uh, on talk radio, they refer to it as X, the platform previously referred to as Twitter exclusively. So I, 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 I like that. Um, and it's habit now. So anyway, sc scroll, scrolling down, you just write, is this C like CDDA? Blah, 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 drink Peter, yes. Uh, it does. This also has survival and building mechanic, mechanics. Anyway, so difficulties. So this is the default, where you can continue after you die. Uh, there's no penalty to skill gain, which means you gain at the intended difficulty. There is a mod, by the way, which increases all skill gain at like 500%. So if you just want to like power to end game really quickly, there that already exists and whatnot. Um, and then you begin as part of an existing family. There's hardcore when you die, the world dies with you. So this is like your actual traditional roguelike mode, if you will. Um, kind of like uh, proper roguelikes, like Tome. You know, you have your different difficulty levels. Um, easier ones let you respawn one or two or three times, depending on the difficulty. And then there's that other difficulty where you can earn respawns, and there's the other difficulty where you just, like, you just respawn. Um... This gives you several options, which I like. And then there's also high fantasy, which is their 
easy mode or like the, I guess your tourist mode, which is uh, drops all items from your backpack and respawns you at the home settlement after death. It basically makes it into like a turn-based survival crafting game, um, which I I really like that this, is, that this is included for three reasons. I like it when traditional roguelikes have tourist modes. Um, I like it when traditional roguelikes, uh, you know, allow for human beings that aren't psychopaths to play their video games. And I like it when traditional roguelikes had those modes as well so that the psychopaths like me can learn to play the game without wasting their time as much. <laughs> um, and then there's, um, but the interesting thing about this mode is, and this also is going to be curious for the other modes as well. Your character doesn't age. This game will kill you if you get too old, which is cool. Um, the thing that I would like to remind you about DuckDuckGo, DuckDuckGo is Google. DuckDuckGo is Google with a different skin and a different business model. They're using Google's API. So Google and their search is getting bad because Google isn't maintaining their search and Google, Google is all about SEO. This isn't using that, which is why it's neat. Uh, that seems a bit BS for hardcore, or is that winning? Here's the thing. When you make a new character, some of them have longer lifespans depending on the species you choose. So we're just going to play Dark Fantasy because that's the intended difficulty. And now I'm going to talk about the, the, like, the characters for a second. So when you, when you select your character here, um, I will cut my camera off for things that I'm covering, but I shouldn't cover too much. Um, we have humans, which live around 70 years. So when you start as a human, you start in your th like mid-20s. Years are a lot of time. It's like 100 days, I think, per year. Um, dwarves. Dwarves live 200 years. Rasami, which is your furry cat people, live 80 years which I'm covering now. Um, the elves live around 500 years, okay? The reptilians, which are also known as American presidents, uh, only live about 80 years, which is false because uh, there are older presidents than that and people that are trying to run for president again, which are just below that. So if that is true, then perhaps we may be in trouble soon. Um, then we have... Uh, Bone wraiths, which ironically are not dead and um, live around 60 years. Uh, and then we have Mushman, which are uh, very... I, I know he has a resting bitch face. That ad is a very happy mushroom man, okay? Do not trouble yourself with the resting bitch face. Now, when you click randomize, they do have various different, like, you know, looks to all of them. And different stuff. Um, your character is represented by, like, a little coin tile on the ground. Similar to, like, a tabletop kind of game. So this is your character's portrait. And other in-world characters are represented by their portraits. And their portraits are persistent. So if you kill them, you won't see their portrait anymore. Mushroom, a.k.a. Dickhead. Um, when, when this game first released into early access, it, it just, it, it, the, the mushroom men weren't in there. I can't remember if the reptilians were. They might have been. I'd need to go look at the VOD, but the mushroom men are new. Oh shit, I should make that into an animated emote. Do you think Twitch... You know, there's part of me that, likes, that wants to make the plump helmet man into an emote, and then there's part of me that's genuinely worried that assholes would report it as being a dick. Hmm. <laughs> Also, hi, Casual. What's up, dude? <laughs> what happened to the other 265 days? This isn't Earth. Planet Smool. Don't worry about the gravity. There isn't much. So, um, I have a question. Am I playing a mushroom man or am I playing a mushroom man? They get, uh, because like, basically like your starting race in this game places you in a different location in the world, gives you different health requirements. 
and gives you different starting stats. So, uh, mushroom keep uh, order in the forests. Uh, they spread spores. That's very Caves of Cud. They spread spores and create mushrooms everywhere. They are a rare race that lives underground away from the sun. And uh, large mycelium networks allow them to stay in touch with colonies in different forests. Oh, that's interesting. I guess that would mean that um, unlike starting as like a human or a dwarf, you don't have to meet new people. I would. I, I guess that would mean that you'd have like a long, a bigger list of people that you know from the get go. Oh, I, I, I always talk to YouTube chat. I just don't respond to YouTube chat as much because YouTube chat, like, uh, to, 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 to be polite for a second here, because I can't actually see it. Uh, the, the Twitch chat currently has um, 215 viewers, and the YouTube chat has, like, 30. So there, there's just not as many people talking. So I look at the Twitch chat more often. So if you're okay with waiting, like, sometimes 10 minutes, I will respond eventually. Let's see the new mushroom stuff. That's kind of what I was thinking, yeah. I mean, like, it's not going to change the gameplay too, too much. And the last time we played, if you go back in my VODs, I played a dwarf. Surprise! <laughs> Chat voted for dwarf. Um, so there is... some Something that's kind of neat about this game is this game is kind of aiming for a lot of different playstyles. The first Solash was very much like run around, beat the crap out of things until everything is a pulp. And then when you've turned the whole town into a red smear, you move on to the next town. That's how the first game worked. Um, this game has construction, which I think was modded into the first game, actually. But the, this, this, the sequel has construction, obviously the persistent environments, and faction alignment and family trees. So there will be factions that you will be friendly with, factions that you will be hostile with, and then points of interest that you just go around killing. So the idea of just playing this as a life sim is a much more possible thing. And also because there's families, and I don't think this is in the game yet, but the idea of like, you know, being able to uh, have a family, uh, theoretically, makes... I guess theoretically playing as your children a really interesting concept. So, like Fortnite, yeah! Just like Fortnite, so the the kids will understand it. <laughs> so now I get to decide what starting skills I want. Um, last time I think I just had an axe. Adventuring is neat, which is all about exploring. I kind of want to take a point in adventuring just because like exploring is good. So I can choose between a water skin or leather, leather boots, or a pickaxe or a knife. Let's take a pickaxe and a water skin. Although I don't, I wonder how much water I need as a as a mushroom. -man. Roguelike Bless Crusader Kings. If by like Crusader Kings you mean there is family trees, then sure. But from the bits that I've played of this game before, I will say there's very little of that, at least right now. Um, protection is a skill focused around entirely one single goal, not dying. Yes, please. I would like to not die. Not dying in real life and in video games are good things. Do I take wooden or leather shield? Let's chat. Would a mushroom person have a wooden or a leather shield? This is not a Disney, uh, what's the word? Product. In regards to Goofy game. You've heard that it's really important to start with adventuring. Mushrooms are vegan. But for a mushroom, is a tree vegan? This is more of an existential crisis thing. Also, my leather skin is definitely... My water skin is definitely made of leather. Yeah, leather bag that can hold water. Or blood. Or other liquid. I think I'm going to start with the leather shield. We're, we're, we're going to do that. I am a uh, mushroom person with a pickaxe and a leather shield. Although I think a, a mushroom person with a axe is funnier. <laughs> like a mushroom person with with a knife. I should. I want to be a. I, I want to be a steely, thingy. Thievery is the art of taking what doesn't yet belong to you. Depending 
on the practitioner's wit, you can path towards incredible wealth or a, or nose around or a noose around the neck, not nose, or a noose around the neck. Uh, this skill is also associate, associated with the Master of Daggers. I want to be a mushroom person with a knife. There is something way too funny. Why can't I click on the knife? It's only letting me click these once. That's odd. Do I have to select and unselect them? That's weird. Lucky mushrooms don't have necks. I mean, kind of looks like they have necks. Chat, you guys get to name my, my mushroom, by the way. So what do I name my mushroom? Uh, we've selected our three starting skills. We've got protection, thievery, and exploration, or which is adventuring. Uh, but now you guys get to name my mushroom. So you guys name my my, my, my mushroom, and I'm going to click the random button until I find one I like the look of. And then we get to pick our stats. I like this mushroom because he's got such a beautiful face, and there's more mushrooms in the background of the image. Stink horns. <laughs> Glorp is also pretty good. Although Glorp is 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 probably good in my brain because it's reminding me of Gorp, which is good old raisins and peanuts. Which um honestly isn't ever going to be beaten by Gorp k mm, Gorp -km, which is good old raisins, peanuts, chocolate, and M and M's. It looks like a sh samurai, so shroomerai. Let's see if I can get a happier face. Oh, I only have one options of face. <laughs> How about mouth? There we go. Hmm. <laughs> That's a happy face. <laughs> oh, that's, uh, I, I do really... I really... <laughs> You know, I'll, I wonder how hard it is to, like, just mod your own pixel art to this game because, like, I just want to, like, draw, like, a very large smile. <laughs> this is kind of, like, looking like... Hold on. Let me just... That's kind of what that looks like to me. <laughs> uh, okay, hold on. Uh, let, let's, uh, let's, 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 let's go with, like... Let's go with the happy face. We'll, we'll be we'll be a happy boy mushroom, and we'll be named. Uh... What's up, Chiefin? It's good to see you, man. Let's go with. Let's go uh, uh, penis envy. Oh boy. Uh... Grumpo Spormon. Grumpo Spormon. Is our name. It's like Rumple Stiltskin. So now we have um, several different options. We can join the Vinostasomp Cave, the Pearl Tsmai Cave, or the Porcinituft Cave. What cave do we want to start in chat? The Vinostamp Pearl Tsmai. Or the porcelain tuft. <laughs> I think these two are a little bit more central. This one's kind of off in the middle of goddamn nowhere. I kind of want to be in something a little bit more central. That is a pink tree. I think that's an elvish settlement. It's either elvish or the cat people, which are basically the same thing. Did I take boots? It's not letting me click things. That seems like a bug. I wonder if that's like a windowed mode thing. There we go.
I think I'm going to go with the one with the pink tree in it. So I'm not off as far in the middle of nowhere. So we have three different families here I can choose from. I'm not covering anything. Um, there is, we can be an orphan. As a bastard child or an orphan of unknown origin, you can't rely on family connections in times of need. Meaning, if I need food, I can't go to my family, basically. Um, one day, uh, you might be able to start your own lineage that will stand the test of time. Going to bed? We'll see you later, Stone. Thanks for hanging. Took dagger instead of knife as well. That's fine. I was saying I want to be a guy with a knife, but I'm going with the dagger intentionally. So that I am aware of. Thank you for pointing out the thing that I am aware of. Um, are there downsides to having a family? I don't know. Um, I haven't played enough of this game to be able to tell you that for sure, if that makes sense. I... Played about five, six hours of the demo, and I've played about four hours of it since it released in early access. I played about two hours of the first version. I was like, all right. And then I played about two hours after he added uh, workshop support and messed around with a couple mods. And I was like, all right. And so I'm not deep enough in to tell you that for flat. Fact. Fact. Yes. Um, no, we're going to be starting with a family. I, I will be telling you that. I, I, I select, I had sibling. I was just simply reading the issues. The only downs, the one that comes with downsides is being an orphan from what I can tell. So we have three options of families here. Now the family, uh, has resources. They also have income and a bank account, basically. So they all have an amount of, and as far as I know, the economy is the same for every faction except for the bone people where they're all just in one giant polygamy or like the, the the bone wraiths or whatever they're called like the desert people that are gray they're in a giant polygamy like one massive family blob whereas everybody else from what i can tell has different family makeups i think the economy is the same regardless though um so there there's that um, so we, and also if, if I die and start again in this world, I can start as a different faction with a different family and all that. Um, so we have three different families we can choose from. This one has a, uh, they're like, they're cut, they're woodcutters. This one is, uh, even though they're a smaller family has two woodcutters and this one has their gatherers. So they'll have food. I think we're going to start as a slippery milk cap family. There's no Euphen like there, there's no bad joke there. There's that that is a very respectable name for a mushroom person family. Okay, just so we're clear here. Um, it's a pretty small family. When I was playing as dwarves, they had like like a huge list of family members. So that's interesting. Um, so there's the leader of the family who is the Polaratus Rotus Slippery Milk Cap. We have Tapanella Slippery Milk Cap. Uh, Shark. Kodom, Slippery Milk Cap, uh, Tabitus, and Enokai. So we are going to be Grumpo Sporman Slippery Milk Cap. That is my full name. If you say anything else, I will be offended. Okay, chat room? We are now Grumpus Sporman Slippery Milk Cap. The first. <laughs> um... Uh, we, we are, uh, a member of the Porcelini Tuft, uh, cave has a mushroom population of 11. It is part of the Alamath state, and the settlement is led by Polarotus Slippery Milk Cap, and is best known pr for producing pine log and spruce log, and, uh, also mushrooms. That name is definitely giving Shrek like Shrek vibes. <laughs> and now we are in game. I'm currently covering the dialogue. I'm going to move my camera. Thank. All right. Welcome to the roguelike. That's us. I am this person. 
I can move around with mouse. It's not letting me move, move with numpad, so that makes me sad. But I can move around with mouse. Um, I can also move with WASD. Uh, this game does have directional facing, which I think is kind of CDDA. So the way the controls work is it's directional facing with Q and E, and then WASD. I, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you could rebind it to numpad, but I'm just going to stick with the defaults. Because I then at that point, it'd probably be like 7 and 8, and then 8... Eight five six four, probably what that would be. That might actually be more comfortable for me. Let, let me just try try that. Hold on. Uh, key map uh, movement style. So forward, move backward, move right, move left, rotate right, rotate left. Leave the rest of that same. Kind of like Unreal World? Yeah, actually. I, I have played Unreal World of once. <laughs> long. Not not super long ago. I played the free version. And then I, I played the free version for a couple of hours and was like, wow, this is a lot. I need to try more of this later. And then bought it because I wanted to give the developer money. And then I haven't played it since. Uh, so, you know, I guess I'm like a model customer then. I downloaded the free version once, gave them money, and then forgot about it. Um, so there is quite a, a decent amount of options here. Like, you know, if, if you want to, it's got your it's got your bullet borderless, which is interesting because I thought I was playing borderless, even though that isn't checked. Um, you know, you can turn off your camera shake and all that jazz. Um, you know, it's got your font. You, you got tile sizes, font sizes. So this is like the, the background size. Um, there, there's also like everything's key mappable and you can customize your font. There's three different fonts available. Um, so, you know, if you, if you, if you want things to look different, you know, if you have a hard time reading things, you can do that. Um, as, as well as like your UI font size and your small font size. I like, I like all of this. This is important to me. Uh, but now we, we, we can wander in game. So there are some mushrooms on the ground. I can right click to pick things up. I normally wouldn't do so much explaining, but I'm, I'm very well aware that this is, like, a game that not a lot of people play. So when it's a game that not a lot of people play, when I start streaming it for the first time in a while, I like to do, like, an hour of lead-up of explaining things. Rotate reverse. Uh, Yes, I do, actually. Interesting. How did I manage that? Was I reading the wrong thing while doing that? Although, oh, there, there's the scroll bar. I was like, I don't see a scroll bar to click. My mouse wheel has been acting up lately. Rotate left. Oh, I see. Yeah, no, I was literally reading the wrong one. I wish more games had like a little line going across or like would highlight the whole thing when I click it because I have a hard time seeing things. All right. Um... Perfect. So the reason this control scheme is nice is because you can like strafe and stuff, which is actually quite important. Um, more of a goofy goober, mushroom boy, just trying trying to get by, you know, less of a evil thing. Although you might be stuck in an ad at this exact moment. So when people come back from the ads, this is what I want to explain. Because this is what's interesting about this game to me. Yeah, Dwarf Fortress has one now, Shadow Absorber, which makes me very happy. What's up, Skibbled? Thanks for the second month. Welcome back. Appreciate you greatly. Just kind of waiting for an ad stand. You grew up playing Final Fantasy XI with numpad, not knowing WASD was a thing for a long time. I mean, people used to play Doom and... Uh, people used to play Quake entirely on keyboard because they were used to from Doom. And then some asshole would show up with, a, with like, a mouse and just obliterate everybody. And then they were like... Oh. Oh, my. 
Oh yeah, no, like this is this is a game where you can just you 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 can just like show up and just like I I mean <laughs> I will die if I were to start doing a thing like this, not in this settlement because this is my family member, but I'm pretty sure if you are a orphan, you can just attack people. But once you're out of your main settlement, you can just attack everything that moves, regardless. Is that just a mushroom? Why is it moving? <laughs> All right, so... I started babbling, and then um, we, we got slammed with an ad, but the r reason I think this game is super cool is this is a list of known entities. Very quickly, this turns into essentially Dwarf Fortress Legends once you start to have known locations, which I have a few, but I will get more. So I can literally look through the history of the events. So this is very simplistic because this game has been in development now, I guess, for like a year and a half, two years. Um, but yeah, I mean, here, let's just type in the year 51 or rather, ser uh, sorry, search bar for not this side, it's for this side. So no, known locations. Currently, we are right here. We are in this location right here. Now, this is the history of the little location. It's not very long, because the world's been around for 100 years, and it only goes up to year 85 was the last thing that happened, where um, we had a caravan established, which probably left to go somewhere else. But I can look at all of these other locations. I can look at this funny tree that's close by, which is, in fact, an elven location. Okay, well, it, it's got some very basic stuff. Now, this is early access, right? And this is, yeah, also you, you can meet a lot of stuff very quickly. You can meet a lot of people very quickly too. You can find a lot of locations really quickly. The actual things that they can do in this is very simple. However, the speed that this game is developed at, at is borderline alarming. <laughs> um, and the mod support for this game is crazy. This could become something really interesting because of the amount of stuff he's gotten here already. So, when I say this game is adventure mode inspired, this is what I mean, is this game is taking a lot of ideas from Dwarf Fortress and implementing them extraordinarily quickly, but it's just the solo adventure side. There is like no fort building or anything. Um, so I guess keep that in mind. This is like, you know, your skill tree, like your hot bar, stuff that you'll unlock. Um, we already have points of interest unlocked, which is which means that I can find things on the overworld. Um, and also I, I see it a full distance in the dark. But at half his distance during the day, I'm assuming that's because I am a mushroom. So during the day is nighttime. That's interesting. Uh, we have our gear screen and our leveling up. Um, so as we level up, I can level up strength, dexterity, endurance, intelligence, willpower, and these are my number of available points, so I can put some points away. So let's level up our strength. Um, endurance improves physical resistances and lets me run more and increases my maximum health. I'm going to just put the rest of those into that. So we got some points into strength. Oh, actually, let, let's, let's go some points in... Okay, we're, we're, we're putting points into strength and then points into endurance, and I'm just going to click go, and we've leveled up now, so that's our base stats done. So that's, like, something you should remember to do, but, you know, you've got all your stats here, right? You can kind of you can kind of see everything. Um, we, have, we have some bread. We, of course, have our water skin. We have our pickaxe. Um, in our equipment screen, I think you can have two different equipment loadouts. Yeah, this button. So we can have our main loadout, which is just going to be shield, our knife, and then if I go to the second loadout, I can put our pickaxe in, so we can swap between those in-game, I think. I don't know which hotkey it is. But I'll have to check that, but... And then we have the overworld. So this is where we currently are. We are we are right here, right? And now each one of these tiles is a map that is explorable. Um, they're not in interconnected like Dwarf Fortress, so when you hit the edge of the map, you see, like, arrows basically to then jump to the next map. Kind of like um, like a Caves of Cut or even like a like a, a Stone Shard or something. It's pretty simple, similar to that. Um, the original game was completely interconnected 
but according to the developer, it was way too much dev time to upkeep and uh, kind of a pain in the ass. So I, I kind of don't blame him. Um, if you hit the edge of the map, you pop in elsewhere. So this mushroom house down here moves south, and then you could actually like pop out up here, I guess. Um, so even if there's like a tiny little island like this, I guess you would access it by leaving the map on this side. So it, it loops basically. You're polishing stones. Well, good for you. En enjoy the stone polishing. What are you polishing those stones for? There appears to be like a little waterfall. Oh, I, I really like the, the little graphic of the, the, the rivers entering the ocean. That's neat. Um, so to adventure, I suppose. Uh, so I can click on somebody and we can speak with them. Uh, do you need something from us? You, you've unlocked uh, that this person is now somebody I, I, I know about for existence. So I can trade. Um, and when I trade, they, like this, this is my family, right? So these are, we, we have paralyzing mushrooms. Interesting. A wild paralyzing mushroom that might be edible. I wonder if that's edible to me. This is my family's like wealth. So I don't have access to that, which is actually behind my screen. 32,802. That is my family's wealth. Um, I have 20 bucks. I don't have the rights to this, but I can trade with them. They produce these, this, this person produces these mushrooms. Um, I could ask for, uh, I, I could ask for training. So for 60 bucks, they'll train me, they'll teach me athletics. Uh, I can ask for other trainers in town. They will give me directions on the map. Um, I could ask for directions to uh, something specific. So if I want directions to the settlement, um, I can uh, get uh, directions to the warriors. Um, not the video game, unfortunately, or the movie either. Um, let's see, what else do we have? We have the, the mushroom cutters, which I'm assuming is how they produce logs. Um, yeah. Uh, so as they produce these mushrooms, uh, they will accrue wealth, which will happen over time. So if I was playing as dwarves, as an example, they'd, produ they'd be producing like, they, they grow mushrooms and farms, but they all, and farm various uh, materials, but they will also sell like ore, right? So it, because they're producing um, different materials, that that's what they... Uh, will then sell. So we can move around within this cave. I'm curious as to where the exit is. <laughs> Maybe stairs somewhere? Or there may just be like a straight up door to the cave? Or a ramp? I'm not seeing anything. Oop. That's a well. So I can go to the well. I can uh, fill my water skin. I can drink. That's my thirst. That's my hunger. I will starve. But, uh, Oh, I see. Huh. I was literally right next to it. That is the way up right there. <laughs> I, did, I, did, I didn't notice it. There's also a way down right here. Okay, makes sense. So there's a tiny little ramp up. It's a little hard to see. I would like like a hot key to hit that. So if you hit leave region, you will just leave the map. Um, if I talk to this person, there is no like quests or anything that they want me to do. So, cause none of that stuff's in the game but we can just click click that button and leave the map. Yeah, I, I know. I was just curious if I could spot it organically first. So, Ozoned, you've watched my stream before, right? You, you know the rules here. Work with me. Come on, man. Um, if you're running around on the overworld and you run out of water, cross a river. It'll fill up your water. Just a pro tip. So, we're going to go visit the elves. Oh, look at that. On the way, I already found a a point of interest. Well, let's get distracted. And uh, the point of interest is uh, an, it's an unknown location. Uh, there is something here. Uh, it is an easy difficulty point of interest. So as you level up adventuring, you'll find harder points of interest. The game took a second to load. We can see on the map there's a question mark over there, so there's a point of interest, and we can start adventuring towards it. So I can, of course, you know, move with the numpad or with the mouse or with, with the numpad. Now, I... This is just me. And dear developer, if you watch this VOD at any point, please do this or change this for me. If I touch the keyboard, the mouse cursor should disappear. It bothers me that it stays there. So I'll just play the game with the mouse. Yeah, if, if you sit here and backseat me, I will do two things. I will ignore you. 
Steven. And if you keep at it, I will yell at you. And if you continue to keep at it, I will time you out. Um, I am very much a, if you're telling me how to game, if you're telling me how to play the game, stop. Uh, if I directly ask chat for help, if I say, hey chat, how do I do this? Feel free to answer. Otherwise, stop. Just, just stop. I was waiting for that over on YouTube chat. Uh, Harry Rosette asked if this is his dwarf, if this is Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode. <laughs> I, was, I was literally sitting here going like, I wonder how long until... No, I none, none taken. I mean, I will take offense if you keep doing it repeatedly for like a good chunk of time, but just kind of poking around and seeing if there's... I was going to say, that's an interesting lag spike. We've discovered a webbed forest. I assume spiders. Well, there's a deer. That's not... That's a funny looking spider. I could pick up a log. There's a deer that's stuck in the web. What is the question mark on the map? That is the point of interest that I just discovered, which is a webbed forest. Eh. So this... It's a moss man. So I can, uh, I, I have a quick thrust, which is a, uh, a, a stabbing ability, which does that. I can uh, put up a shield wall, which uh, stand your ground with shields raise, reducing incoming damage by five for three turn for three seconds worth of turns. I can also slam into things with shields and I guess he gone now. <laughs> okay. Um, up here we have uh, our stamina and our fatigue. So if I run out of stamina, I can't I can't move. I'm trying to remember what the hotkey is for waiting. Rest until healed. Is it H? No. Ah, I see R. It's literally just R. So when I rest, I gain stamina back and we slowly gain fatigue. I need to sleep when fatigue gets too high. But combat's pretty simple until you get a couple abilities. Is there a way to get information about enemies? Uh, hold shift, it says when you hover over them. I don't know about a keyboard. Like, it it, it, it kind of... Hold on. No, that, no, it's not hold shift. I There used to be. Unless I'm going crazy. Hold on. Let me look at the keybinds. Because I swear that there, used, that there was a way to do that. Like, open up enemy information or something. Like a look at thing, but that's, it's just looking at the ground. Don't close, light on and off. Maybe not. I seem to recall, like, clicking on enemies and, like, getting a equipment screen, but... No. No, you cannot, Lord Kenner. It's a much simpler combat system. Like, this isn't adventure mode, right? And I think people need to remember that. This is a game that is heavily inspired by the ideas from adventure mode. It's not adventure mode. But it does have a pretty good magic system if you want, like, to shoot, like, fire out of your hands. <laughs> There's also mods for other types of magic already. Goddess Tot as well. Thank you very much for the 14th month. Yeah, okay, so you, you can hover over the mouse man or the, the moss man there and like hold shift, but it doesn't give you much more information like than that, which I find a little odd. I seem to recall there being more, but I might be like just misremembering as of the first game. So we do have like hearings so we can tell if there's other things in the vicinity, like there's something right there, which I can now see. And it's a spider. Hmm. I'm gonna walk this way. Because I don't like the fact that there's a spider here too. I'm also now either stuck in a shrub. I'm 
going to, I think, shield slam you. Whoops. I'm going to shield slam you back. I like how much distance I get on that shield slam. You can also, like, straight up just attack plants and stuff, and they will die too. Environments are destructible and persistent. So, like, if I leave waste in an area and then leave and come back, it'll still be destroyed. You have no idea what you'd be able to actually go up against. Um, yeah, you do, to a degree, because when I went into this point of interest, it stated that it was easy, meaning there aren't going to be any high-level enemies here, and I can probably defeat them, basically. So, like, the game, is, the game gives you an idea of what you're up against when you enter the area, if that makes sense. Like, it is pretty gamey like that, right? Something like Dwarf Fortress is very simulation focused where it's up to the player to know what you can fight this isn't like that it's going to give you an idea of what you're up against when you start fighting and like i said the combat is really simple initially so it's mostly just an ability uh, a matter of using your abilities when they come off of cooldowns at least initially i need to rest one turn take some hits what's Irking me is how little damage I'm doing. I guess it is because I am using a copper dagger, which isn't exactly, you know. I'm doing, I do two to three physical damage, and this is like a plant that I'm fighting with. The spider isn't doing too much either, thankfully, so I'll hit the spider. And then shield slam you back. Keep hitting you. And I level up in thievery. Well, that's fun. When you get an overall level... Bonk. When you get an overall level, uh, you can level up your stats. I should have taken something that was more... I should have, like, built a character that was more, like, s stabby or something so that I would do more damage, which would get me through these earlier combat levels quicker, but... Sun's coming up, so my vision's gonna get worse. Okay, you die now. So I can pick up their bits and pieces. Okay. Spider is too heavy. I can't pick it up. This corpse is too heavy. You can't pick it up. Can I scavenge? Oh, I need a cutter to scavenge. I'm just going to rest until all my stamina back. It's literally, they're literally, they didn't have any loot or anything. All right, well, I'm going to walk this way and I'm going to rest. So you can rest until healed, which does cost you food basically, because your your hunger goes down. A lot of things in this area, so it's loading pretty slowly. You level skills by using them? Yeah, it's it, it, it does the Skyrim thing, right? Um, now, if actually, if I go to... Where is it? Skills, yeah. So adventuring levels up just literally by traveling around on the world map. That's how adventuring levels up. Um, protection here, as you can see, we, we've gained quite a bit of that. And... They all have their own skill trees. So if I look at protection, um, when I hit level two, it just gives me, it makes it more efficient. Um, we get shield slam at level three, which we already are. Uh, we get an automatic parry chance, pa like defensive passive, basically. Um, when we hit level six, which we started at because, or which, which we're already at rather, we, we leveled that up, um, which we just gained. Uh, so the next two levels, I just get more stats basically. And then, uh, when we hit nine, we, we'll get a quick block, which is a maximum parry uh, for one second, which will, can go onto our cool on, onto our ability bar. Um, so you you gain abilities as you level up, essentially in in that way. And then there's your overall character level, uh, which you level up from this screen. So uh, and whenever those abilities level up, you gain you gain these points, which are these, um, which can then be spent on your overall stats. Did you say you can build? Yes, there is a construction skill in this game. Although, in order to gain a new skill, I think somebody has to teach it to you. So I'd have to find somebody in the world that could teach me that, I think. I think that's how that works. Because when you have no skills in something, you just straight up can't do it. Um, unless it's like a weapon type, at which point I just need to find a mace and equip it. Um, I don't know about like crafting and stuff like this. I need to figure that out. Um, I could... 
either find like a teacher who could teach me the thing or I would need to like find a workshop and start doing it. But yeah, if, if I had like say wood cutting and carpentry, I could chop down trees and then take the logs from the chopped down trees with an with, with the correct tool, make those into planks and then build structures out of them. Or alternatively, I could find already chopped down logs, turn those into planks and build structures out of that. Um, I don't know if there's anything, I don't know if I can build out of like stone. I know that there's mining. There's also weapon smithing, so you can mine uh, underground in caves and find materials. And um, I have a pickaxe, so I guess I could start mining if I do that, but it would take a while initially. Um, but when, um, excuse me, if I scroll through this, where's mining? Uh, maybe there isn't a mining skill. I know that I can mine with a pickaxe, but I, I guess it's just like armor smithing. But um, I would need to find, in order to do smithing, I would need to find a uh, an anvil in the world. Um, same with like tailoring. So yeah, anyway, we're, we're going to con continue our adventuring. So I've, I've healed up a bit. Uh, I do need some food. Um, I have this purple mushroom, which I think I got from home. I eat it and it is in fact edible and it gives me 10 hunger back. That's not much, but okay. There's another spider here. Let's just kill this. So I'm already doing more damage because I've leveled up. And also, it's just a, it's just one fight, so. And it's way weaker than the Mossman. Gives me a little bit more levels. I'm going to rest a couple times. Let's just kill these spiders real quick. Yeah, we're, we're gaining levels pretty quick. And because it's a turn-based game, you know, that first fight I was just playing pretty slowly to kind of explain how stuff works, but I can just kind of do this now. <laughs> oh, there's this. Gather. I, did I get anything from it? I'm assuming that would be to gather silk. Actually gonna set the key, the controls back to default because I can't just play on keyboard. Um, yeah, because I can't play just on keyboard, I, I might as well just use like a combo. And it's actually easier to do it this way. So I've gained a whole bunch of points to spend already. Um, stab you. I need to heal. Uh, which one's the one that gives me more health? Increases maximum health by five per point. I got two points to spend. Let's level up endurance twice. Okay, I got another one of these Mossmen. Who I don't do any damage to. Hmm. I might have to run, actually. Let's just shield slam you back. Because I'm tired of taking damage from you. Vanish. Hide from sight, becoming invisible for three turns. Can I? Oh, I see it because I can't. I can't. I have to rest. So I'm now invisible. Interesting. I can hide. Cannibal? I Shh. I've never played a thief before in this. So that's like um like a hill right there. I like that you can't see behind you. That's something that is really satisfying to me. Let's knock you back. Go invisible. Just trying to leave this zone. Or at least get far enough away that I can heal a little bit. Because I'm taking one damage to my endurance or to my stamina every time, but not always taking physical damage. Let's just put up shield block, which keeps me from taking damage. Knock him back. Rest. Rest. Keep fighting. This thing is just doing enough damage to me that it's like concerning. I'd rather not die. 
this early. But fortunately, I was able to kite the spiders away. It's just this guy is able to follow me. I'm down to 15 health. Eh, we should be okay. Because he's not, like, critting me or anything crazy. And healing takes a bit. I probably would be able to just leave the map, but... Staring at my health. Eh, nine. We're okay. <laughs> he says we're okay. Let's back you up. Become invisible. It's a little bit. Keep back. That is sketchy. Shield up. Hmm. So I have three health. He has five. How do I math this out, chat? Yeah. I mean, I can kill the spiders, no problem. It's these... Leveling up give HP? I don't think it heals you. Let's try it. 16 for endurance. No, it doesn't. Well, I'm invisible now. If I attack him, does that... S okay, so attacking someone or using an aggressive ability will, 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 will hurt me. But I can rest... Does King heal me? Eating does not heal me. Hmm. He moves faster than me. Can knock him back. Can rest. Back up to four health. Down to five health. Trying to raise my protection. I hit him. Didn't take any damage. He's down to five. Both down to four. Mm. I'm going to go invisible. He's down to four. I'm also down to four. A lot of math here. I'm going to rest. Rest. Just waiting. Walking away. And we managed to leave the map. Okay! Well, that was terrifying. <laughs> so if I um, just enter this, a random region, we heal back up. Hoi! Well, we didn't die. That was a fun fight, though. I will say. Or a mushroom. Did I gain a mushroom? No, I didn't. Good show. Not dead. You know, not not dead. Not dead. A plus. I mean, I am just a little mushroom. I did level up a bunch, and I'm in an ad break now, so. Um, let's take some dexterity, which um, improves weapon damage by one for every two points. Daggers, pole arms, and bows, and crossbows, whereas strength improves weapon damage in your carry ability and your parry and um, various other things, depending on your weapon type, apparently. Uh, reduces time required for certain actions, mining, woodcutting, and all that, which I do want stuff there. Um, but uh, we should start putting points into dexterity so I can do more with my dagger. Increases uh, sneaking, which is also useful. So. So as you um, discover things on the overworld, you discover what's in that location. By the way, like resources wise. So let's uh, wander around this non point of interest area a little bit and see if I can discover some things. There's like generic trees. Can I harvest from that? I can. Okay. I can gather stuff. 
and then whenever I hear that sound, we got two apples. Whenever I hear that sound, if I go back to the overworld, we now know there's apples here. Which is cool, right? Because I found apples. Let's see what else we can find. Little butt up sound is a very... Someone should make a mod for this game. That plays that sound. But instead of that sound, it's Navi saying, Hey, listen! Remember I said that there's logs on the ground? There's a log on the ground. So if I had the right tools, I could cut it in half. something up there. Is that a deer, maybe? Well, there's a, a wall here. It's a deer. I'm gonna bonk the deer to death. I wonder if I shield slam it, if you hit the... Ooh, wow. So if you shield slam it something into something, they, they take damage. So I can um, try and pick it up, which I can't. I uh, don't have a cutter, which is strange because isn't a dagger a cut cutter? I guess I would need a knife to do that, but I'll probably craft a cuttable thing. Can I? No, I can't. I can make a copper ingot, a torch, and a quarter staff currently. I need to learn how to craft a knife. I cannot eat a sheep. Pay to Ender's chat. I was getting experience, okay? So there is some basic Z-level stuff. You can move up onto a higher ledge of this cliff. Actually, I wonder if I can mine into the side of this cliff. Let's find out. So, there may be a hotkey to swap these, but... Dig! Missing a tool. Shovel. Oh, well... Fine. <laughs> Apparently, I need a shovel to dig into a wall. Not a pickaxe. Okay. Could have fooled me. Where's my inventory? Oh, it's the equipment screen. A knife and a dagger. One lets you cut apart animals. One's a weapon. Yeah, one's for stabby stabby. One's for slicey dicey. There you go. See, very, very, very logical description. I guess it's because this is like a gravel mound instead of like solid rock. This is dirt, not rock. I guess that makes sense. See what else we can find. I mean, I already found two apples, so. And my stamina's dropping, my hunger's okay. There's some more things I can gather. What do we find? Got blueberries, raspberries. I guess that was blues blueberries that we just found. Please kill more deer for funnies. If I find a deer, I will absolutely stab the deer. And not for funnies, but because I want to not die. And having lots of stabby ability is a good way to not die when things actually want you to die. Caveman, thanks for the five pack of gift subs. I think it's the first five pack of the stream. Appreciate you, man. It's for the same reason that if I'm playing Dwarf Fortress Adventure Mode and I see a turkey, I will in fact challenge it to a wrestling match and then wrestle it to death. Because I want to train wrestling in that instance. <laughs> Alright, let's let's run to the edge of the map. We found some stuff. Uh, try the demo first, if you're uh, iffy on it. Because it does have a demo which got updated yesterday, actually. Because I still have the demo installed. So he is updating the demo. I'm not sure what he... I think it's like a level cap is what the demo has for like limitations. But we were heading to this elvish place. So let's head there. So traveling, you see how much food it's going to cost. Or how much hunger it's going to cost you and um, how much thirst it's going to cost you. So this will bring us down to 57 hunger. Let's head to this elvish place. So this is an elvish reason, re region, uh, which has foragers, a wood a wood bender. Oh, that's interesting. Um, a leather worker, forest gatherers, and guardians. So they do have soldiers. Peaceful mushroom man here to speak with elvish peoples because the town, it drops me into the middle, right next to water. Um, this is a... 
I want to fish in their well and see what I catch. Um, because it's a town, this is like a survival thing. If it's a friendly town, it plops you into the middle of it so that if you're like about to die, you can immediately get some basic resources and, you know, not die. I also like the fact that you can literally just attack anything. Also, cutting wood is forbidden here. That's typical. Very elfy. Hello, elf. Person. This is if fire fire of vine. Okay. I'm a mushroom. One very derpy boy. Also, if you are surprised about me associating with elves, you are very new here, which is okay. Plenty of people are. I will associate with anybody until they attack me. I speak first, could attack later if they attack me. That kind of person. How is the playability of this game compared to DF? I have no idea what that question means. Could you please give me a logical question that I can answer? How is this playability compared to DF? DF is perfectly playable, so I don't know how to answer that. This is a video game that's also perfectly playable. It's not really a scale I can answer on, I guess. A game is a game. Yeah, it's a, it's a video game that's playable. What? How easy is it? Are you asking about learning curve? Or are you asking about how, how easy is it to understand? I might be a bad person asking that request, that question. Is there a way to see this full zone of the map? Like the, um, like, is there a way to zoom in on this? I don't know. That's actually a good question. Main game big. That's, 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 that's just a funny thing to read. I know it's font sizes. Is there a way to embig in the minimap? I don't know. Hmm. Let me check hotkeys. Open a world map, because there's the world map, yes. I know you can make the UI bigger and smaller, but that's not really what you're asking. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. It would be nice to like have like a maybe shift M or something to like make that full screen, but is th th that 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 is one of the funniest questions I've had all day. The is this a live stream question because I can't tell if it's a joke or not. Greetings, friend. Are you curious about the wonders of the forest? I'm going to ask for trainers in town. What do you have around? They've got carpentry. By the way, these aren't Dwarf Fortress elves. These are just elf elves. Uh, they can teach me sword fighting, protection. Uh, carpent uh, carpenter who works at Nims the... Let's, so I now have directions to their carpenter. So I should be able to just... I don't think that's... Okay, yeah, no. That doesn't lead me if I click on the mini-map. should be able to... Ah, there we go. We have a woodbender. Uh, each piece of wood tells a story. We aim to enhance that story through our craft. Okay. I could order a product. I could order leather, wooden barrels, firewood, wooden sword, wooden shields. That's interesting. I could ask for training. They'll teach me carpentry for, carpentry for 60 coins. They could teach me the basics of carpentry. Ask for other trainers. Can I just trade with them? They have mahogany wood, mahogany log, and elven wood. I don't want to know anything about your elven wood. <laughs> uh, you cannot click on the map to travel. I was trying to do that, but no, you can't. You can click on the button to leave the map. This button takes you to the edge of the map. I kind of wish they had like points of interest or something. Sort of like how Caves of Cud has like the points of interest people um, where it just takes you to the, you know, points of interest on the map. What else do we have here? What are you? Uh, okay, you're just a person, I guess. Forest gatherer. Okay, so they've got Ooh, they got meat, nettles, blueberries. So I could actually start selling stuff. Actually, strawberries sell pretty well to you. 1.31 coin for strawberries. Here, I I will sell you my coin. 
my, my strawberries in exchange for coin. Thank you much. Speaking of, I now have no food. Um, I should probably leave the map and go get more food then. Let's leave the map. Chat wants to know about their elven wood. We're in trouble. Is that your elven wood or are you just happy to see me? Clearly it's my mushroom head. Or my very happy looking face. <laughs> so uh, the point of interest is still there. Um, let's just move down one tile and drop down and go explore a little bit. So I assume it's like implied that you're sleeping while you're traveling on the overworld because your fatigue resets when you appear in places. We could all be time travelers except for you. I mean, this is true. Your own reality is relative to your own experience based on the fact that you exist. And on the only things that actually exist that you know for certain are the things that you can currently see. I might cease existing until you walk back into the proximity of me. I might not exist at all. I could be fucking generated by some assholes in Silicon Valley that are stealing somebody else's content. You, you never know. Um, no, this is a Grumpo Sporeman Slippery Milk Cap, and I'm 10 years old. <laughs> I assume I'm an adult. I, I don't actually know. But no, I'm, I'm Grumpo Sporeman. Oh, God. I hope not. Maya. I was just bullshitting and making shit up. You know, the, you asking that question implies that you have listened to more Joe Rogan than me. Because you asking, is this the Joe Rogan's po is this the Joe Rogan podcast implies that you've heard Joe Rogan talk about something similar to what I was just talking about. So maybe that's more of a statement of your character than mine. <laughs> I mean, we had this discussion the other day that I didn't know that Joe Rogan was the like fucking host of Fear Factor at one point. Which is a show I've watched. Crazy thing. Um, all right, so we now have uh, raspberries. We have strawberries. We also have raspberry. Can I plant? I guess there is a gardening skill. Agriculture is the art of growing crops and raising livestock and using the resources to make tasty food, sometimes with surprising qualities. Uh, it is the easiest way to make sure that you always will be full. Huh. You see, I fixed YouTube, Laya. YouTube is not allowed to recommend me things based on what I've watched previously. So YouTube's recommendations only recommends things based on the video that I'm currently watching. So for some reason, I end up watching a crazy person video. All of my recommendations will be crazy people. If I'm currently watching a Dwarf Fortress video, all of my recommendations will be Dwarf Fortress videos, which ironically is mostly my own videos. Um, <laughs> and like, Krug Smash and Hoodie Hair and like maybe Nook. Um, if I'm watching like, I don't know, a, a video about Xbox, it'll all be Xbox. Because like, it, it, it doesn't aggregate recommendations. It's, if you turn off YouTube history, it only gives you a recommendation based on the thing that you are currently watching. Which I, I, I prefer YouTube that way. It's... It's much easier to, like, get out of dumb rabbit holes or get stuck in a loop of only watching um, H Bomber Guy videos. And you know what? I'm okay with this reality of all realities that I've ever been in. Speaking of realities that I've been in, if you want to live in the reality where I read horror stories to you, I have a secret chan YouTube channel now where I, where I read horror stories, which is people say is pretty good. I put one up yesterday, which I'm very happy with. I then record them onto cassette with like way, way too much like silly production for what it is and then record music and then record it back onto cassette again. It's it's a pretty good time. Yeah. Hi, Ivan. Elfie lunch. Enjoy your lun lunchy, Elfie. All right, let's leave the map. I have food again, so we're good.
I will say it would be much easier to get large amounts of food if I could hunt. <laughs> oh, 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 what's that? More blueberries? Grab that. Also, if I could like, can I cut wood off this? I need a, I, I need the skill of woodcutter or an item to cut wood with. I'm assuming it's an item to cut wood with. I'm a little scared of the desert. Hmm. Let's actually just explore the overworld a little bit until I discover something. And by something, I meant like a point of interest. So I got two points of interest. I got one that's easy and then one that's troublesome. I'm going to go to the easy one. There's also two more almost immediately. Well, let's walk towards this point of interest. See what we get. I mean, I, I think that this game is, like, kind of designed to allow for that, right? In the... Oh, shit. I, uh, I picked two more raspberries. Um, which I think I immediately ate. Yeah, so I am starving to death right now. <laughs> uh, which means I need more food. I need a supply of food, in fact. Yeah, so I, I picked two raspberries and my character automatically ate them because I'm starving. Which is actually a nice feature. What I should really do is just like go sell stuff. So I should I should try and complete this point of interest, which is that question mark right there. I wonder if the game's gonna lag again when it loads it in. No, it didn't. I've discovered an enchanted forest. That looks friendly. What do you think, chat? Should we go give it a hug? What are you? It's a wisp. These blue flames dancing above the ground are spirits of the forest. I'm sure it's friendly. Oh boy. That hurt. <laughs> I played so last one. Yeah, I bounced off it. I played about 30 hours of it though. Never finished it. Hmm. This is the ability I wanted to use. All right. I may actually just run. Trying to get food. Okay, I might be in trouble just because of that. Oh boy. Let's just run. Go invisible. Invisible. Oh, I'm aware it said easy. I'm also aware that I'm very weak. Because I didn't build a combat character. If I built a combat character, I'd be more surprised by this. But. Let's shield slam you. How much damage am I doing to you? It's just, it's literally these guys. It's like every other enemy I've fought, I've been able to actually do damage to. It's literally just these guys. Eh. Non-physical resistances by one for every two points. We have one point to spend though. Let's go into dex. I really wish that this stupid wisp would stop debating me. <laughs> All right, well, let's just drop down here and get food. <laughs> this is easy. Here's the thing, like I said earlier, I'm not playing a combat character. Notice how I'm not killing things, really, um, except for things that are way weaker than me. I'm just trying to break into areas and steal stuff and get out. The problem is, is they, well, they spotted me, but I was able to get some mushrooms. 
Yay, I can finally see again. Sun's going down. I mean, if I had an axe, I could cut that wood. That's a wolf. I could kill that. But no, I mean, like, if I built a character and started with, like, let's say pyromancy, um, and axe wielding and protection, right? Um, and then I played as, I, I could, I could play as this character or something else, um, put a bunch of points into strength, I'd be hacking the crap out of everything, right? It's because of the character that I'm playing. I have thieving, which is, you know, not the greatest for combat related things, especially against stronger enemies. And yeah, I mean, like I've, the last character I built in this game, I was raffle stomping people by this point, at least the easy ones, because I, you know, had combat ability. <laughs> What build am I going for? Fuck if I know. Playing it by ear, having fun. Lurking in background for a bit while cooking. Hope everyone is having a great Sunday. I can go around these uh, these uh, wolves. Wolves. I'm not a gremlin. Do I look like somebody who's ever posted on Tumblr? I don't even have a Tumblr account. I deleted it. <laughs> it's true. I, I, I had one and I deleted it. And also for people who um, are tuning into this stream because you know about this game and like it, if you start telling me what to do, I will ignore you. And if you continue telling me what to do, I will probably time you out eventually. I uh, I enjoy learning by doing at my own pace. Just an FYI. I did a flip and I kicked you in the head on the way down. I'm sorry. Hey, that's something that I was looking for. Hey, what have we found? We have found sapphires. I found money. Also a little waterfall down here. Problem is I'm still starving. <laughs> Let's use this to food get. Okay, so let's let's leave the map. You know, it, it's kind of funny. Uh, the look of this game is quite controversial. I've seen some people viscerally hate the little character icons because the first game had like little sprites, basically. Like they were static, but they were still little sprites. Um, also, by the way, that was just a for fun time out. I don't actually, I'm not actually mad at you or anything, Stephen, for clarity's sake. Um, all right, so where's the nearest town I can get to? Oh, will that kill me? I don't think so. Chat room, to people who know, is that enough starvation to kill me? It says minus 100. <laughs> Do I need to move one tile at a time to get there and not die? Oh, I see. When starva Hold on. We're at starvation 2. When starvation reaches 4, you won't be able to travel on the world map. Okay, so we're, we're, we're okay for a little bit. Mildly hungry. Ah, you know, it's just mild case of, like, severe starvation. Started at the edge of town, which is... Okay, no, not at the edge of town. So I think this is the cat people. Hello, cat person. Trade with me. Do you have food for the love of anything that is edible? Um, well, I can get a bunch of, uh, I, I can get some money from you and uh, you have a lot of dates. I'm going to just assume that dates are edible. 
Sweet, chewy fruit is perfect snack for a traveler on the go. Sweet. I will also... How much food is that? Food 15? I will just buy... Two meat. And then as many dates as I can afford reasonably. I just ate all, like, most of them. There we go. We are no longer starving to death. I'm assuming I can eat meat. Yep, I can eat meat. All right. So we, we are no longer starving to death. So this, this is this is good news. Congratulations, chat. We are no longer starving to death. I filled up my water skin. I'm going to eat meat. And then the meat. And we're going to go mine. Let's go back to the edge of the map. <laughs> dates with date salad and raw meats. <laughs> There's, you know, cat people everywhere. If I go to known beings, these are all the people that we've met. Uh, like this person who we, who we just bought stuff off of. Um, they're in the, the town of... Uh, Kuchasaka, and uh, they're actually a. They've been working at the hunters, so they're a hunter, and uh, they they they're married to a, an, an in burrieder, an in burrieder, um, and maybe that's their name. And uh, this person's also worked at the fiber spinners pre previously. Yeah, I'm in. So, I mean, I mean I, I, I've been putting dates in my oatmeal, and it's been one of the greatest decisions I've made in a while. Okay, where, where was that place with that? Oh, Jesus. That was a, a misclick, my bad. Where was that place with the mines? There it is, right here. Let's, let's dive back down and, and go, go mine some more stuff down. So, this was that area where I was before. <sighs> Are NPCs randomly generated? So, you missed the world gen stuff? This game has very Dwarf Fortress-esque world gen. Like... Very Dwarf Fortress-esque world gen. So it, it generates a world and it generates history. So if I actually um, I give you an idea of this. These are my known locations, right? All of the locations have different populations. So if I go to like Bone Pork uh, is a part of the Kessel State. The settlement is led by Kirby of all things, uh, and uh, it is best known for producing meat and maple wood. There's no bounties there. I don't have any history there, um, but uh, we do know that they that they've you know have been uh, Corpinus Weeping Peel established. A car That's a name. Um, they've been trading a lot. That's all that we know about them. Crystallized ginger chunks. Yeah, my 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 breakfasts have, have been um, dates. Uh, raisins and i've been putting in frozen blackberries that i picked in the alleyway um last summer because uh berries in the grocery store have gotten too expensive so i've been digging into my personal supply uh, i have uh, eight uh, little ziploc bags left about yay big of blackberries and uh i started using them around december because that's around when i'm wearing an ad break so i'll babble for a sec um i started using them around december and uh, I had 20 bags, and I have uh, eight bags left. So, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll get there. I'm slowly starting to use less every day, but, you know. I mean, I calling these wild is, blackberries is maybe a, a stretch. I picked these from, like, the alleyways, and they're in people's backyards mostly. But hanging over the back of fences. So like, like la la last summer when I was out there picking one day, uh, I just have my headphones in. I was just sit sitting there picking, picking, picking. Random dude walks up and he goes, what are you doing? And then I looked over and I was like, huh? And I realized he was like peeking out from around his backyard. And he goes, oh, I thought you were casing the place to break in or some shit. And walked back inside. I'm like, I'm literally picking blackberries. <laughs> like I live in that building right there. Like I'm your neighbor. What? They're in, they're on city property. I can stand here. So it's kind of funny. He literally thought like thought that I was peeking through his fence when I was literally staring straight up like picking blackberries. <laughs> I certainly wasn't staring through his fence, I swear. 
I did not care about the pile of trash nor the beater car in his backyard. But yeah, um, so the characters are randomly generated when the world is generated. Um, and all of the locations have their populations. They're very small. Like it's a, it's super small scale, but perfect alibi. I swear I wasn't trying to case that guy's house for break-ins. Let's see if we can do some uh, forging, become a very dwarfy little mushroom and So chat room, so what what do you, what do you think of the uh, little sandbox that is Soul Ash so far from what you guys have seen? You could also like sleep and stuff if you want to wait until certain times of day. All right. Um let's just rest real quick. Running low on dates, but Got 27 copper ore. Am I reading that correctly? 270 is the value? <whistles> when did I get a pickaxe? I started with a pickaxe. Because I started with a, some skills in mining. Um, if I scroll down in the skills here. Where is it? Am I just not seeing it? Or is it something that doesn't level up? I guess it's something that doesn't level up. Anyway, yeah, I started with some points in mining. <laughs> so I started with a pickaxe. So I can make copper in ingots, uh, which I require a smelter to do. So I need to find somewhere that has a smelter to make copper ingots. There's actually quite a bit of um, like crafting in this game. It's just, you know, I don't have any of it unlocked. <laughs> let's uh, level up a little bit, probably. Nope, we don't have anything to level up yet. Okay. Well, let's uh, go up here, drink some water. What? Did I just... Chad, I killed the water. I'm going to take a bath as well. <laughs> Careful, don't click the wrong button on the water. You might kill the water. What's up, Akuma Sporky? Ten grams each, twenty-seven of them. That's not bad money. But I can make them into twenty-five each if I make them into ingots. And probably even more if I make them into something else. So let's let's see. Okay, so does this place have a smelter? So I can like check what they have. So I don't, yeah, the, none, none of the army stuff has been added into this game, but on the roadmap, they, the developer wants to have basically armies moving around on the world map and like inter-faction politics, I guess. Stonemason, engines, guardians, hunters, brewing, sheep ranch, weaponsmith, armorsmith. That would, yeah, that, that would imply that there's a smelter there. So I'll get a little thirsty on the way, but we'll get water right there. So I can go all the way down to here. And uh, they should be friendly to me. And from there, we can figure out where their smelter is, and we can smelt this ore that I've bought. Can I not travel there? Is that the problem? Maybe it's just too far to do it all at one move. You think those were just... I still killed the water, though. I attacked the water with my weapon, and the water disappeared. Uh, Caves of Cud will definitely have more content than this. This is a pretty different game. I mean, if you're if you're if you're debating between Soul Ash and Caves of Cud, Caves of Cud is basically a finished game. It's like a game that has a forty-hour, like. Hmm. I would say a 40-hour campaign because, like, y you would want to play it on both a as both a uh, mutant and a 
uh, as and a true can that's fully written with story and dialogue and a lot of really cool systems and also just a cool as hell sandbox to mess around in if you're not interested in the story side of stuff or when you get tired of the story side of stuff. This is just a sandbox and it has nowhere near as much content. But it's also very different kind of content. This is much more of a like open world survival game that is stacking systems on top of that. Whereas Caves of Cud is a RPG with a, like, C Caves of Cut is a really cool game, but it's a very different game than this. So, I don't know. I, I guess it kind of depends on whether or not you, what what kind of game you're looking for, really. Okay, so, we are in this, uh-oh, you're injured? That's interesting. Why are you injured? Dugar Hardbane is now known to us. I'm going to ask for trainers in town. Oh, actually, no, I'm not, not going to ask for trainers in town. I'm going to ask for directions. To the smith, smelter. There you are. So now I've asked for directions. It's right there on the minimap. There's a sheep there. What? I lost my directions. Ask for directions to the smelter again. <laughs> From somebody else. There's a lot of stuff here. Seems like the humans, like, kind of have an... Uh, must be, like, one of the easier factions to start as because they just have all of this stuff. What? I'm under attack by a bat. I just two shot it. Okay. Oddly surprising. Where is the smelter? Oh, I can't. I can't mine the human mines. At least I can like three shot the bats. <laughs> Maybe that's why that guy's injured. Human town dangerous, I suppose. Oh, this seems promising. Hardbane, you, oh, you're the tailor, okay. So I can sell stuff to you in exchange for clothing and various other things. Oh, hey, you've got gems too. It's going all right, corn and yourself. Um, I am a mushroom man, is what I am, possible. And uh, to answer this question for the third time today, Yes, I've played the first Soul Ash. There's an interview with me talking with the developer about it on my YouTube channel, if you're interested. How many races are available to play this? Let's see if I remember from the starting soon screen. Human, dwarf, elf, furry, reptile, uh, gray bone desert person, mushroom person. I think that's all of them. Am I missing any chat room? I think that's all of them, but they're adding more. The mushroom person is just the most recently added one. Ask for directions. Where the hell is your goddamn smelter? No, oh, wrong direction all together. That, hmm. I guess I have a long distance that I need to walk before I can get there. Oh, right, yeah, because the map doesn't do what I th always think it's going to do. <laughs> Still a bit of a distance, though. Combat turn-based. The whole game's turn-based. You're the armor smith. Trying to get to your goddamn smelter, man. What? Ask for directions. Smelter. It's back that way? Oh, all right, because it, it was this way when I was on the lower level. Now it's over here. Oh, boy, that's that's something. 
I think I found the smelter chat room. I hope. Maybe it's underneath this. And back down in the mines now. Hello, you. Random person. I guess, I guess it's you, then. An armor smith. How about you? I was wondering... I'm trying to figure out if there's somebody I can ask to train me in basic smithing, but... You're a miner? Hmm. I guess it's this. So let's cry because I'm starving to death again. Not the best materials to make weapons, but yeah. Okay, so, so what do I need to do this? I can make... guess all of them this takes fatigue I did say reptiles yeah there's lizard people I I can never remember with games like this whether or not you have to open up the crafting screen to craft or if you can like you know just do it <laughs> by in, from the crafting from from like right clicking on it um okay so now it's like, yo, yeah, I can make bronze, which requires copper ore and tin ore. And I'm starving to death. <laughs> well, at least, you know, that's continuing. And consistent. Here's hoping I can get some food off of somebody now. Hello, Mordor. How's things? Converse. Trade goods. What do you have? You have meat. Please give me the meat. I really need the meat. I will sell you three ingots to make up for my losses. Right, done. I am no longer dying of hunger. This is good. <laughs> About this game, but it looks pretty simple. I mean, I, I guess it depends on what your definition of simple is. In in the grand scheme of things, certainly, yes. But it's also a very, like, recent release, right? Like, it's been in development for, what, like a year and a half now? And as a base for a new game, I think it's pretty freaking cool, actually. But, I don't know. This is one of those games that I think is going to always suffer from does this game need to exist? And I say... I want more games like this. There isn't enough games like this. So I want more games like this. I want different takes on similar ideas because that is interesting to me. Let's go to Weaponsmith. This is over on the other side of town. But yeah, I mean, the gameplay loop for this is not the most insane thing ever by any stretch. And I think that is totally fine, at least for me. Now we get to figure out if I can do some weapons with it. All right, where anvil? Stone anvil. There we go. Guess uh, I need to get some skills in weapons mething before I can do it. Makes sense, I suppose. So. Let's see. One of you has to be the weaponsmith, right? Yeah, you're, you're the weaponsmith. Um, can you train me? 60 bucks? Okay, we'll trade goods. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, now I've got 60 bucks. Sweet. So I will give you the money back now. Train me. Okay, let's see what I can do now, if anything. I need to level it up first, or do I need a tool? I might need a tool. I 
Uh, a knife made out of a piece of bone. Simple knife for cutting meat. What's this use? One metal. I would like to make that. Oh, maybe it's because I'm not standing next to it. Nope. Hmm. Odd. I mean, here's the thing, right, Motor? I don't. <laughs> I mean, I haven't played this game in months. You know? All right, now it's time to figure out where to go from here in order to get basic. I need to sell you more things? Teach me your weapon smithing. I guess it's the, the question of potential that is like curious to me. Also, this game does have a built-in tutorial. It's literally right here, crafting. You can check with uh, tasks advanced by hovering over them in the skill book. The blue bar, which is the each milestones, your skill have a limit of potential. Your character has a maximum level potential that you can see above your skills list, which applies to the sum of all skill levels. Every skill has has individual level of potential. You may improve your skill potential by finding a trainer NPC and pay gold to teach you new things. Okay, well then how do I get a... Zero of 11, yeah, because there's a, a maximum number of things you can learn. But I thought I could just, like, go pay them and then start doing it, but... Because I want this so that I can cut meat. It just requires an anvil. Well, let's go stand here again and see if I can do that again. Let's try it again. I don't know. It's an anvil. And right click to move there. There's also furnaces here and a weapon stand. Hmm. Yeah, I don't know what I'm missing here. Chat, if anybody knows, feel free to tell me. Because, like... Because, like, I did pay to increase my potential, which is the maximum skill. Can train the skill by crafting or upgrading or salvaging weapons. I don't really want to salvage my weapon. So... It's really weird that you say that. Please don't say, please just thank me for existing instead of yelling at me that I'm alive. Saying that I'm alive is very strange. <laughs> it's like mildly concerning, Frag. <laughs> How are you today? I played a game called Tibia. No, but I know of it. I know that it exists and I know people who played it. If I'm not mistaken, that's an MMO, correct? Because I do not play nor enjoy MMOs, which would probably be why I haven't played it. Uh, the only way to start weaponsmithing is to loot and salvage weapons. All right, well, let's go loot and salvage weapons then. Actually, how are we doing on food? Let's just double check. Ah, we're good. We're okay. This is a very long way out. Yeah, generally if a game is like, oh, it's free to play. Eh. Oh, it's in a... Yeah, I'm out. Oh, has multiplayer connected? I'm out. But that's how you unsell me on a game in like a sentence is tell me that it has multiplayer. Or is an MMO or even kind of an MMO. I'm amazed at how underground that human settlement is. <laughs> it's like more dwarfy than dwarves. Unless that was a Dwarven settlement. I was under the impression that was a human settlement, but maybe it's a Dwarven settlement. All right, um, right, let's go uh, here. What did we get? There's another point of interest. Game's taking a second to load. There we go. So that's our way out.
You can learn skills for money? Well, I just tried that and it didn't work, so we're gonna go beat the crap out of somebody, steal their stuff, and break it down. The normal video game route of doing things. Or I'm gonna try to. I, I'm gonna try and charm them with my beautiful face first. An attacked caravan. Well, that's, that's a good sign. There's an arm right there. Excellent. Misty. Hello. This person uh, looks like they had a really bad day. They came out of nowhere before anyone could do anything. Uh, we were under attack, and uh, I just want to go home now. Oh, wow. They actually have some information. They know where there is uh, a circus of blood, a snake pit, a jungle cave. Let's ask for the cave. Where's the cave? They've now given me the ca cave location on my world map. Thank you, person. Uh-oh. It's a baboon. Burned out campfire. Let's see how much I damage monkeys. Let's knock you back. Bonk. Hey! And skill and protection. At least these monkeys die way faster than the tree people. That's a wolf. Jesus. Shouldn't you attack the monkeys too? Not a fair fight. I'm just a humble mushroom man. Good lord. <laughs> it just keeps getting worse. Although I should be able to just... Get, ma make you go away. Rest real quick. Protection up. Okay, so wolves die way slower. A vegan wolf? I I don't think I'm vegan considering... I, I don't know where, where all these vegan jokes have come from with, like, the mushroom people don't eat meat. You guys are aware that, like, fungus grows on dead things, right? I think I should leave. This is a problem. <laughs> Like, you, you you do know this, right? They'll eat, like, mushrooms grow on literally everything. Like, they, they are literally like the corpse cleaner uppers. Of nature. I mean, I'm not talking about video games. I'm talking about just reality. But yeah, I, I, I don't know where all these, like, where, where this, like, like uh, almost meme that you guys are, like, repeating constantly came from. But, like, what makes you think that mushrooms are vegan? <laughs> They're, they're vegan if a human eats them. Sure. You ignore reality here. Got it. Okay. J just just double checking. I, I, I was just trying to figure out if this was a meme or if this was something you guys thought was real. Temple of the moon. There's a temple here. Oh, also, that's, that's, the, that's the cave. Let's just go there. So this was the cave that I asked for directions to. Maybe I can go mine stuff. I have no idea if eating an orc in 40k is vegan. I probably need to level up dexterity quite a bit more before I'm going to be able to... Um successfully stealth stuff away. <laughs> Green, so yes, that's your logic? One of my, like, actual favorite vegan bullshit things, as somebody who is a part-time vegan who will sometimes... Snakes. Snake, snake, snake! Psychomantis? Um, is that uh, white sugar isn't vegan. Yes, I'm aware that dexterity increased knife damage. I read that in the UI. Please don't tell me what to do unless I directly ask you for assistance. Thank you very much for your understanding and support.
What are you? A bug. All right. Chad, I found a bug in this game. We should report it to the developer. I don't think he would appreciate that if I actually did that. Is Elfie missing pets? I already killed all of the spiders, so I assume so. Um, also, yeah, to, to, to pull the thing out of YouTube chat, uh, a, a lot, not just some, a lot of white sugar is filtered using bone charcoal. So, because when, when you know you are done slaughtering an animal, uh, you burn the carcass. And so that carcass turns into something. And in a lot of cases, that is that something is usually charcoal. Just back up a little bit. I want to rest. Let myself heal a little bit. I don't think it's gross, actually. Like, as, as somebody who, like, will eat vegan food pretty frequently but isn't even remotely strict... Um, I think that if you're going to slaughter an animal anyway, you should use it for something, you know, like if you're going to, if you're going to, if you're going to kill a cow and make it into steak, you, you got to do something with the skin, right? You got to make clothes or something out of it. And if you're going to, I have a dead snake in my inventory. <laughs> and then if, uh oh, we're out of food again. Again, God damn it. Um, and then if, 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 if you have bones, you got to do something. Exactly. Yeah. Waste not, want not. Uh, all of my VODs that aren't, like, offensive to YouTube, meaning all of my VODs that don't contain music are probably going to end up on that channel eventually, yeah. Or highlighted and put onto the main channel. Or both. Why? Ooh, that's, that's my goal. Got the stuff. I got three unspent points. Let's just go invisible. Let's go invisible again. Also, what's funny is I didn't actually get the stuff. <laughs> but I will level up real quick. Let's level up decks. Let's kill this bug. Oh, hey, I got another ability. Backstab. Uh, change position with the enemy. Oh, that's kind of useful. And do what? Damage, I assume? It's like a, a, a utility move ability. Oh, there it is. Right there. Oh, was there nothing actually in it? Was it just XP? Here, I was thinking it would give me loot. I just got a glowing crystal piece from mining. I think that Twitch integration should stop existing, Lettuce Leaf. So no, I've never had any ideas for it. And I hope that people stop developing Twitch integration for things because Twitch integration ruins games for me. I am a person who finds those kinds of features in games to be off-putting at best, annoying in, in the medium, and at worst, uh, game ruining. And they also often make me want to stream the game less if they take off because it makes the audience ask for it and complain when it isn't a thing that is widely used, so. No, I've never had any ideas for Twitch integration for Dwarf Fortress, and I wish people would stop asking because it ruins video games. Like, how to make a game less pleasant in th less than three steps. Add Twitch integration. It's a waste of time for developers and awful on behalf of streamers. Some streamers will talk about it as a good thing because 
it often makes the money. I've never actually encountered a streamer who unironically enjoys it. Got another bug to kill. Let's try this backstab. Okay, so it's like swap places. That's fun. Gives us a little bit of utility. Let's slam you into the wall. Bonk. Don't mind this gem. Got another crystal piece. Anything up here? Bunch of dead snakes. Live snake. Now a dead snake. Alright. There we go. I do need some food, though. <laughs> Stare around in the environment and see. I could pop back over there. There's a something right here. Let's jump into here. Look around. Starving to death again. Yay. Yeah, there are some Z levels, but the this game is nowhere near as advanced as as Dwarf Fortress. I mean, like, that human settlement I was in, like, maybe, I mean, like, not not even ten minutes ago, had, like, four levels or something. But uh, you need to realize that this game, it's, it's nowhere near as crazy as Dwarf Fortress is. In its environment or its depth or anything. But it's also a game that's been in development for, like, you know, a year <laughs> and a half at this point. What about raw meat? I ate it all. I ate it while traveling, and I can't eat this snake, snake corpse because I don't have a knife to cut it up with. Uh, traveling on the world map uses a lot of food and water resources. You can gather water while um, crossing creeks. Actually, it's, it's kind of funny. A lot of the negative reviews that I've seen for this game are literally just like... I'm confused by why I keep dying of thirst and hunger. It's literally because, like, traveling on the overworld uses a lot of hunger, hunger and food and stuff. So you need to be consistently, like, either buying food from people or um, stopping and gathering. Moonlit moss, cow milk, and bear fur. I found treasure. Also can't move over a chest apparently. But I can also mine. What are we getting from mining? Once I rest. Iron ore. Ooh. Not bad. Not bad. 20 value. I'll take all of it. That I can carry, at least. I mean, it is pretty punishing, at least in the early game. I'll say that. When it comes to, like, food. But that's why you... If, if you don't want to have problems with that, train cooking. You know? Because that gives you more sustenance. Instead of just, like, the basic berries. So these are topazes. I wonder if I can cut these gems. Or if these are already cut gems. I also wonder if they have any uses aside from... Oh, it get. <laughs> So they, they give, like, electrical damage to weapons. These give light? That's interesting. So they're, like, weapon... They're, like, magic power-ups, basically. I wonder if a ruby makes the sword go faster, because it's red. That's the extent of my Warhammer knowledge. And money, yes. I am a humble gem miner, mushroom min. Might as well just stab some more snakes. As I'm, uh oh, that's a gorilla. Hello, monkey. Hmm. Not hitting me as hard as I thought it would. Well, I managed to stealth away from the gorilla and it lost interest and now it's walking away, which is kind of funny. I didn't think that would actually break its aggro, but it did. If 
because I went invisible and then like backstabbed, and I guess that was enough to like make the gorilla forget I was there. Seems to be a bit of a pea brain gorilla, I suppose. Okay, let's. Just walked right past him again. You would have imagined Ruby would be fired. Yes, uh, that would that would make some sense. I could understand the video game logic in that. I can't salvage those snakes because I don't have anything to cut them with. What is here? There's a fisher forge. Ooh, all right. Let's let's go here. This is a desert Steve Saz town. Oh, lizard people. This is Kwaiha Requar. Hello, Kwaiha Requar. Can we speak? You need something. I'm trying I'm trying to look busy here. I don't want to know anything about your bussy here, okay? It is a dagger, and I cannot use it to butcher things. Yes. It is neither of those things, in fact. You have bird bones? Uh. Ah. Whoa! I can sell my topazes for a decent chunk of change. Uh I, I need to ask for um directions. Let's go to the Do you guys have a bakery? Like <laughs> Log Iron Pit, Forgers, Hunters Lair Fisher, Forgers. So, like, if I started in this town, right, as a lizard person, and I started as somebody with mining skill, and I started in one of the families that had access to the mine, I could just start mining the family's mine without actually leaving town. All right, Elfie. Today's not going to be a super long stream, so just keep that in mind. Kind of thinking about, like, maybe five hours, so... Um, let's go to the Fisher. That's pretty close. What's with the spooky music? I get it. I'm surrounded by politicians, but like... Was I two? Hunter. Okay, you work. Trade. What do you have? Fish meat. Meat! Okay, so you give 30 food. You give 35 food. Well, I will sell you this bear fur, because it's barely fur. This one's a keeper. <laughs> okay. If you insist. I will sell you the topazes. 275. Excellent. I don't think meat rots. Chat, does meat rot? I like that meat's cheap. I wonder why. Maybe it's because they have a surplus. Because, like, everything else is, like, very expensive, but meat's cheap. Days since last bra moment. Uh, minutes, more like. <laughs> Anyway, I'm no longer starving, and I have 999 on my food scale, so that's good. But yeah, eventually, like, as this game develops, I mean, right now it's mostly just a sandbox, but, like, as this game develops, it the develop the developer's roadmap for this game looks kind of rad. So, you know, I'm actually going to take a minute and just, like, pop open the roadmap and just kind of cover that, because I think it's maybe worth looking at. Um... Currently, the, the, the core features that they want to have. So this is just like, these are the things that, uh, here's the plan. I hope to add links to the sections, but they don't work. So uh, this will have to serve as a TLDR. So their core features they want to have. Um, and this is also the version that they're going to add them in. Uh, which, for clarity's sake, we're currently sitting at 6.5 for the version numbers. Um, adventuring parties. So being able to have more than one person moving around in 
in game. I guess asking people to join you. Uh, settlement management, wars and conquest uh, events, which I think is like world events. Uh, story and victory conditions. So that's that's what they want to have for 1.0. Uh, they want to add pole fighting, hunting, as in like a skill for hunting, necromancy, which was in the first game, and unannounced skills and civil. Okay, so stuff that isn't there. Oops, where, where'd that go? Um, medium priority, a family system. So I guess being able to have kids, uh, variety, more variety in points of interest. All you, although you can already mod more of those in if you want, uh, boats, <laughs> playable vampires and liches, more skills, obviously multi-tile enemies is something that I think is really interesting. I'd love to see what that is. Uh, known monsters and a, and crime system that works, which I don't think works right now. Um, I don't know what carts are. I'm assuming like mine carts, uh, marketplaces, a delivery service so you can have like stuff shipped to you i would assume uh other and uh, other translations and uh, i guess alternative tile sets so um hopefully that adds a little bit to what we currently have don't you need to cook meat no i'm a mushroom no you don't need to cook meat i've been eating meat all the time raw i think if you cook it you just get higher amounts of food back trading carts oh true i was thinking my, my brain goes to mine carts but DF roadmap versus Soul Ash roadmap. Nah, I'm good. Potatoes are delicious. I agree with this, Chiefin. Maybe a horse-drawn cart? Oh, true. It might also be like travel carts too, like a fast travel system or something. Using less food. I don't know. We'll see. Um, ask for directions. I need your smithy so I can forge up my iron. I like right on top of it, maybe? But you have a smelter. Also some interesting stuff nearby. Uh, you know what? I just want to learn all of them. Give me all of the things that are nearby. Thank you. Um, ask for trainers in town, venturing, agriculture, carpentry. Uh, ask for directions. Where was that? Smelters. Oh, I see. It's way off. The, it's all the way at the other end. Okay. I'm suddenly cons... Oh, they're... Because, they're, like, I keep bumping into things in here and, like, squelching sounds. And it's, like... I guess the edge of the map is just, like... Squelchables. Oh, can I not make iron? Can I not smelt iron? Do I not have enough skills yet to smelt iron? Oh, man. Oh, that's interesting. I can upgrade my items if I get magic ingredients. Whatever that means. No idea how that worked. Make a bedroll. We get linens. Let's see if I can cook. Let's just see if I can find like an oven or something. I know in the first game you could just, like, make a fire, but I can't really do that if I can't chop down trees even. Uh, ask for directions. Is there, like, a food place? Forager, smelter, iron pit, foragers, farmer. Now yeah, we'll just poke around and see if I can find a campfire or an oven or something. I don't even know if they'd have something like that. You like any game that has a trainable maces skill? Why maces specifically? Are you just like a blunt person? <laughs> that is true. It is a very heavy... Uh, responding to YouTube chat here, it is a pretty big D&D &D trope to... 
have maces as a trainable skill? No. We'll rest until evening. Oh, I see. We're in the middle of the night. Never mind. Don't rest until evening. I just yoink some of their iron. Let's spend... What does intelligence do? It reduces the purchase prices by 0.5%. Uh, and increases chance to recover resources from salvaged items. Let's increase dexterity by one. We're leveling up intelligence. I'm doing all right. Kanichiwa on yourself. Game's lagging a little bit. No, it's not. Never mind. I thought it was lagging. Blunt damage is better than slash and pierce. Fair enough. We've got old pillar. These are all now points of interest that I have. A lizard man village, which isn't plundered. Hunting grounds. Interesting. It's troublesome difficulty, though. Circus of blood that's easy. Chat, what do you guys want me to go to? Uh... Circus of blood... Or hunting grounds. Circus of blood because that's where you're at? <laughs> okay. I kind of figured I knew what the response would be, but... Okay, so... Location is kind of north... Delicate, subluminant flora that thrives under the gentle touch of moonlight. Should have update, upgraded my dagger. I'm a dumb. It's okay. We'll go back there in a... Whoop, what's this? Funny color tree. We got bananas, chat. If this was Caves of Cut, I'd be in a really good state. So now we can have raw meat and bananas for dinner. <laughs> This is pretty far. Ah. Reanimated human remains must be somehow infused with dark magic that allows them to move. He's wearing a rusty helmet and a copper short sword. This is what I'm looking for because I need to break your weapon here. I'm going to use uh, my shield and... Uh, oh, that's not actually what I wanted to do. I wanted to do this, but... All right, and take that and that. He's got a crappy helmet and a crappy stab. But I can wear the crappy helmet. I don't know how it fits on my massive head, but, you know... Not gonna worry about it too much. What's that? What is that? Oh, it's a fresh grape. <laughs> Checks out. Ay, yeah. Okay, so we got skeleton archers. I'm gonna go invisible. There's a letter. I don't know how I can see it from this far away, but it says, I just hope that we won't uh, take the fun too far this time. Blood for the blood gods. I'll walk away. Try and catch them out one at a time, you know? Uh-oh. Well, found one. Just gonna go invisible and then rest. I think is probably what I'm gonna use going invisible for. So Circus of Blood, I guess, is just like a, a, a death cult. <laughs> That or it's just a bunch of Dwarf Fortress players manifesting in other video games. Should also take those humanoid bones. I'm sure, there's something I can do with that. Opera Buckler. What's the defense on this? Parry 
Okay, so this is just straight up worse than mine. Although this does have acid resist, which is interesting. Mine doesn't. Can I do anything with the letter? I guess I can just read it. Storytelling, I suppose. Pool of blood. I'm going to swap positions with you. Wow, that does quite a bit of damage. I backstab. It's like 20 damage. What are you? Okay, Skeleton Archer. And it also, my backstab breaks aggro? That's interesting. Well, let me try something real quick on this next guy right here. So I'm going to backstab with you. Okay, so that didn't break aggro. It did with the other... Maybe... Actually, hold on. I'm going to try this again. Backstab into the bush. Okay, no, that still doesn't break. Weird. Why did it break aggro then? All right, I can take the crude shortbow. Rest up. Oh, found a snake. That's my, my goal, what I'm looking for. Let's see what we get. Bison leather and some linens. There's a sign chat that says blood for the blood gods. There's also a blood fountain, which is a source of infinite blood. I can't do anything with the blood fountain. There's a Iron Maiden. It's playing 666, the number of the beast. Um, on repeat, you, you can't get around number of the beast. Uh, as inside the blood spikes, it drains the blood of its victims while keeping the unlucky being alive. There's also just corpses everywhere. Pleasant. Lovely place. Oh, there's also just like a pond of blood. Obviously, torches. Neat. Eh. Get over here. <clears throat> I'm just going to make you go bye-bye for a little bit. Eat you instead. I really like how much damage that backstab does. I'm going here so that that ranged guy can't hit me. Oh, eh. Stuff's too heavy for me to keep picking stuff up. Probably because I got snake corpse in my inventory. What do you have? There we go. That's a heavy ass snake. I think we need to put that snake on a diet. They're getting fed too frequently. Um, Level up intelligence. And leave the map. Need some blood ducks? Right. Because that would be the greatest blood god. Wait, do you guys have a... They don't have a weaponsmith, but. Can I buy a small knife so that I can cut things up? Nope, but I can salvage all this stuff. Okay, I can't I can only salvage the weapons. I can't salvage the armor. That's interesting. Which isn't quite enough for me to Okay, so that's teaching me armor smithing and some basic weapon smithing. So, I need to level up armor smithing. So, here's the thing. I absolutely could just like act Quite literally, use that sword. I guess because these are rusty, I can't use them. Probably, I had to bet. Um, literally, the reason I am 
not buying stuff is because I, I want to train weaponsmithing. I would like to be a weaponsmith. Um, and in order to do that, I have to get enough points to be able to smith weapons to be able to start doing it. If that makes any sense. Um, so I'm just trying to figure out how to learn the skills. Like, could I buy a knife to be able to cut up animals that I've hunted? Yes. Do I want to figure out how to craft a knife? Yes. Does buying a knife help me get to the crafting a knife goal? No, not really. I think we killed the clowns, actually. You're troublesome. What do you have? What was that ability amplifier mission? It wasn't a mission. I paid somebody to m increase my max level. I didn't understand how the mechanic worked. If that makes any sense. It wasn't a mission. I paid somebody to train me in a skill, and they did. So this is, oh, that was a dwarven camp that I was in. Gotcha. Okay. Any other... Let's go here real quick. Enter region. Speak with somebody random. Beware of the harpies, says this dwarf. Got it, dwarf. Anything interesting nearby? Teach me all of them. So if I actually, like, look at my skill tree here. Oops, not this. And scroll down here. Um, it says weaponsmithing's max level is 11. And the rest are all a maximum of 10 because I increased my maximum possible level. That's what that did. Was it increased my maximum possible level? I didn't understand how the mechanic worked, which also makes it seems really seem really cheap. It's only 60 bucks to increase your maximum level. What's this? That's a cult hideout. Difficulty hard. Yeah, no. I need caves. Lion's Den. Mm -hmm. Graveyard that's troublesome. What else do we have? Attacked a caravan. There's an oasis. Swamp cave. Let's go. But yeah, I mean that that that's the loop for this game, right? It is. You go, you, you go to an area, you complete a point of interest. You, you go back to it, you go to a town, you buy stuff, you go out, you complete more points of interest or you work towards your goal, which is trying to level a particular skill. Um, as this game develops, more stuff will be added to that loop, right? And um, this is me checking in to see how much stuff has been added since the last time I played. That was very quick. Two crude bows that I can just break down immediately. But I would like to break in here because I would like to do some mining. Um, I can tell you this. This game has developed a lot since I last played it. I've already run into more enemy variety. I've already ran into more variety in the towns. The dialogue has uh, had a whole bunch of stuff added. Uh, I mean, obviously, there's another playable race, which I'm playing right now. And overall, this has me very enthusiastic on the development of this game. Uh, it's because I was wet. That's why I had bubbles. Although you might be in an ad, so I don't, I, I gotta wait. Chat room, can I get a round of beers? Also, by the way, um, one of the factors in my brain that I have for, like, whether or not I should stream a game is activity of chat. So if you have questions, yell at me, uh, or just, like, start talking about off-topic shit. Because if chat's engaged, that means that this is a game you guys want me to stream more. If chat isn't engaged, it means it's a game that you guys find boring. That's that's how that works. Because if you guys are interacting, it means that it's it's interesting. Otherwise, it's a game that I'll put on the back burner un until major updates come out, and I'm just too interested to not play it. So, if this is something you guys are interested in, keep the chat moving. Also, just in case anybody missed it, we have a new emote. Crypt notes. So if you take notes, uh, you might have a better chance of uh, passing the test at the end of the stream. 
level up my strength once more so I get the bonuses from that. Just like salvaging the stuff in my inventory while fighting. Apparently you do take damage. Okay, I was curious about that. Shield slam you away. Just didn't end up working. Should have gotten invisible to do that. That's okay. You're allowed to do housework. I was mostly just babbling because there was an ad break and chat had been kind of quiet for the last 20 minutes. Uh, seven. In regards to how many playable races are there so far. Uh, it's humans, dwarves, reptilians, elves, cat people, mushroom people, and the desert people. Yeah, no, totally. But I'm just letting you guys understand how I operate, right? Like, I don't need you guys to make excuses or anything. It's all good. I'm just doing my job. I don't have too many more bugs to kill, which is good. I love how I'm eating mid-fight. <laughs> just a funny concept. Like, hold on, I'm hungry. I, I gotta just, just let me grab this, like, steak out of my pocket and eat it real quick. Uh, it's because I am playing a thief, which is very much like kind of a singular hit thing. You want AoE attacks? Take Pyromancy <laughs> at the start of the game. Or take some magic spells, and then you'll get big AoEs. Um, I think like the warrior has like a charge ability. So yes, there absolutely are AoE abilities. I just didn't take any at the start. I'm disappointed by this so-called cave. Not anything I can mine. But no, you could start off with AoE attacks if you wanted. I just wanted to do something different more than anything. Also, your boy just um, leveled up. I think. No, I didn't. What did I level up then? What was that deling I heard? Or maybe it's because I broke down everything all at once. <laughs> Come on, mushroomy. There's a troublesome locate two troublesome locations. Curious if I can just and if there's like stuff for me to mine in the high mountains. Um <laughs> I take that as a no. Huh. So I walk into the high mountains and it's literally just like mine. It's literally the the captions are Google Voice to, or Google text to speech. So it's like if you talk at your phone to like send texts, it's the same software. That's funny. I was expecting it would let me like go further than that. But Are they all just like that? Okay, so not all high mountains literally are just like, congratulations, you can't move. <laughs> What's that? Flint? Ooh. Betcha that'll let me make a fire. I'm looking for things I can mine. Ooh, there we go. Found three times iron ore. Nice. Just lag tights everywhere? I have no idea. I haven't played this game since it launched on Steam. All right, cool. Wolf. So don't ask me questions of that sort, because I will not be able to give you an accurate answer. Oh, bats. And also, I don't have the fireball skill, so. I just go ask on their Discord if there's bugs that you're aware of and that you're wondering if they've been fixed. Picked up 2x stone. Interesting.
I can now make iron ingots. That's kind of cool. In before mining into a mega dangerous cavern. I'd be kind of... Based on my, like, assumed knowledge of how this game works, I would be surprised if that was a thing. But I wouldn't be too surprised if I stumbled into a dangerous cave. Or if there was just, like, bats everywhere. Hey, it's a heart. Game's happy to see me. Game is happy about Happy Mushroom, man. Let's rest until evening. Yeah, I don't know. I guess it would... The, I, my, assum, my assumption is that it would just treat it like a wall. But I don't know what, what, what it would do. I know you can't path off of cliffs by just clicking off of cliff. So I assume if you, like, shield smash a creature backwards, it would fall off of the cliff. I don't know. Our mushroom child has aged. Well, I mean, by a few days. We're up into day 11, or age 11 now, which actually... What year is it? <laughs> well, that's a dumb thing to say, but... Yeah, we're, we're up to day 98. We started on day 50 of year 100. So it's been almost 50 days. I know that uh, the developer of this game was saying things like, as you age up to dying, uh, like the idea would be like you would put all of your gear and stuff somewhere so that you can quickly level up for your next character. Um, what's this? A lot of stuff up here that we could that we could do. I'm gonna go to this um, oasis actually. Oh, I'm clearing a bunch of stuff. One, two, three different things. I don't wanna add those, but let, let's just since we're here now, let's go to the oasis. This is apparently an easy encounter, and I'm running kind of low on food. Although we've been out for a bit now. I mean, yeah, it's we we multiple days worth of travel for that just now. Oh, into the arrows? That's just the edge of the map. I, I don't think that's going to do anything. You have to do it deliberately? Oh, is that like a right-click to, like, confirm moves thing? Oh, I'm aware that you can personalize stuff, right? But here's the thing. This is why I don't want people backseat. Because, like... If you're talking about this, if you're talking about like ability amplifiers and whatnot, um, yes, I'm aware that you can adjust stuff. Because, right, like these, what, what's the word? There's a frog in front of me. Because these go, because like these can be moved around on here and I'm assuming that the ability amplifiers go onto like a red ability amplifier would go there, right? But yeah, no, I'm just not messing around with too much of that right now. Especially considering I'm more than strong enough. But I do need to stare at those, so thank you for the reminder. Can I butcher you yet? But, in regards to the reminder, might as well. So you can take these amplifiers and they go into these, they're like gem slots which you get as you level up. So different color abilities take different color gems or different abilities take different color gems. I also just unlocked something with this. Uh, taunt a target, uh, forcing it to attack you for the next three turns and reduce its chance by 20%. Oh, that's interesting. Anyway, this is kind of where the majority of stuff is going right now. Oh, I have here, parry chance, thorns. Knockback damage plus 300%. Ouch.
It is, in fact, the Dwarf Fortress tutorial, man. Yes. Bonk. It's a very upset toad. Just going to... I was going to say go invisible, but I hit the wrong button. <laughs> I was aiming for four, but I hit three instead. Let's just uh, go invisible and then rest. Apparently completely breaks all aggro. Cool. Um, ooh, I'm not gonna break that down. I got a fish and a fancy knife. I can butcher things now. Yay. <laughs> oh wait, no I can't. It's just a better dagger than the one I currently have. A uh, short dagger with a skull topped uh, decorated handle, nice. Very good for sacrificing people and shadowy altars. <laughs> Mo movement reminds you of Stone Shard. I'm always sad when people's only connection or like they're, the first thing their brain goes to is possibly the worst example of this genre I've ever seen. <laughs> it's like, man, I hope you play better games than Stone Shard at some point. It's just such a shame. Such a shame. Ow. Apparently Frog has like a jump ability or something. It's gonna rest and then stab you. Blink. Drink. Clean. All right. That's it. Okay, let's go to Bone Village. Hello, Bone Village person. They're one of the other playable races. So they do have weaponsmithing stuff. It's asking who will teach you stuff generally just would take you to the thing, right? Yeah, well, still don't have the weaponsmithing stuff. Actually, hold up. There's a campfire here. Now I guess I, I, I can't cook. For a product. What can I order from you? Spear? I didn't. Bone spear? Javelin. How much is that? Not actually that much. That's interesting. Okay. Um, let's... No, not ask for training. That's not the button I wanted. I wanted directions. Do you have a smelter? I don't just waste my time. Sand shapers, bone forge, bone cauldron. Can I cook at a cauldron? Uh, chat room investments are open if you care. Just curious what a bone cauldron is. Binder. Okay, well, that's not what I was looking for. Oh, wait, no, that's the thing. Bone cauldron. This large blackened cauldron is made from entirely interlocking bones. Steaming, bubbly liquid. It emits a spicy, earthy aroma. Bones and other mysterious ingredients are thrown into the cauldron. They are boiled during the ritual creating new bone wraiths. Oh, that's how they, uh, that is how they make new people. All right. It's mildly concerning. Thanks, I hate it. Speaking of people here, person. You're a child, I can't trade with you. They literally cook new people. Which is kind of funny. <laughs> Somehow I missed that the one time I played these this faction. Also, they're all like one big family. They, they don't really have like... 
specific hierarchies. Ooh, cheap meat. I mean, I guess they have to get all the meat off of things before they can make more people, so I guess that makes sense. Um, what can I sell you? I'll sell you the linen. I'll sell you the bison leather. I'll sell them the raspberry seeds. Don't really want these stones, so I will sell those. And I will buy some extra meat. Stir over medium heat and get no people. Man, if it only was that easy, I wouldn't be single. I guess the way to their to a to the heart of these people is cooking. <laughs> Sun came up, so I'm now un incapable of incapable, unable to see. All right, well, time to move. Well, the reason I say activity equals more streams of the game is chat activity does two things directly. On YouTube, it tells YouTube that people like this, the game, so it tells YouTube to recommend it to more people. In Twitch chat, it keeps me entertained and more interested in playing the game because the more entertained I am while playing said game, the more I want to play it more, right? It's just kind of how I operate, and it's how most channels operate, regardless of if they say it out loud or not. What time is it? It's late evening. Um, let's just move, and my line of sight's going to go up as soon as nighttime hits. I don't know what this area is. I just know that it's not super difficult. I need a way up, I think. Forgot to open YouTube. Well, there you go. Now you've remembered. Also, hope you're doing well, Neokai. Okay? I don't actually think I said hi to you today. Although in my in in uh, chat's defense, uh, if I'm playing a game that I'm not used to playing, I'm usually way worse at reading chat. Kind of makes me worse at my job because I'm focusing on like trying to not screw up or forget anything or miss a mechanic or you know forget to level up or that shit. So it's just a feedback loop that promotes the play of a game if I can tell that chat is enjoying it, is all. Ooh. I have discovered a cave who has somebody named Roxanne in it, who I can attack, which I, eh. You are a named person. I'm gonna go invisible and see if I can just stealth in, steal stuff. Ooh, I've got a glowing jeweled dagger, a flash bomb, okay. Flash is bright on impact, stunning targets. Must be dark magic. A centaur's hoof, interesting. And of course the close, of course the glowy dagger. I will back up, go invisible. You didn't see anything. Stealthy. And I'm not stealthy enough. <laughs> Need to see if I can increase the duration of my stealth. So this is a, an AOE thing, oof. And then I will backstab you. So this is um, Susanna. I'm sorry. You had a torch, upper dagger, pants. Which actually does damage. It does fire damage, so what's better, this or mine? So this one does five to seven. It's crafted with copper ingot, plain leather, and glowing crystal piece. Whereas this one is doing two to four, but also two to four acid damage and two to four holy damage. And it makes me smarter by holding it. So obviously I have to keep my quartz ceremonial there. <laughs> There's something very funny about that. Also, thanks for the follows, by the way. Appreciate you. 
She was only wearing pants. Well, I only got pants back. She may have been wearing more than pants. Also, somehow her pants fit me. That's the truly confusing part of this. Salvage that. Probably shouldn't have salvaged that. <laughs> oh shit, I can make a fishing rod. What do I need for that? Planks? I can make... I guess I, I need to chop wood to make planks, but I've, I've learned to make a, a fishing rod, so that's kind of cool. What are we doing on that weaponsmithing? We're getting there slowly. I guess I should just go horribly murder the other person. <laughs> See what else I can get. Oh, that's a barrel. Can I throw the barrel? And salvage the barrel? I was wondering if that would give me planks, but it didn't. I know that barrels have like planks and barrel staves as, as part of them. It's a wooden crate. I'm just gonna shield slam you into the goat. Wow, that was very effective. I'm going to backstab the goat. That feels buggy. I feel like I shouldn't be able to backstab a thing I can't, or punch a thing I can't see, but. More pants. Dagger to break down. I'm hoping there'd be something I could mine in here, but. Speaking of fancy, uh, YouTube now has uh, vertical streams for like mobile. I'm behind the scenes trying to figure out, because I know it's possible. Someone already said that they've done it. Um, and I just need to like go through the documentation and figure it out. But apparently I can stream to YouTube twice. So essentially what that means is I can stream to YouTube in vertical and horizontal. I have no real interest in like primarily streaming in, in vertical because I think that vertical is like not the greatest format for a viewer. Um, and I feel like if you're gonna watch me, you should watch in horizontal. But if I can like make the option available, I think that's really interesting. So if you're like, if you're on a phone and watching in the, and like watching shorts on YouTube, you could stumble into my live stream from there, which I think would be interesting. It's another mountain, point of interest. Also, this is like just a medium sized world. You can like tr triple the size of them. But ways to grab potatoes tickets. Um, I was gonna say make French fries, but that's, that's mean to the existence of potato. This is not Dwarf Fortress. Obviously, I stream other games. You know, it's funny. I, I do say chat lets me play other games sometimes. Oh. I've discovered a Cavian village. Stack some leaves. Friendly. A lot of bats. A bat. Hey, a crude mallet. A lucky fur shirt. What does this thing? I don't, there's no luck stat. Oh shit, it gives me dexterity. I should, I should absolutely wear that. Chad, it's my lucky first shirt. I don't care how many holes I get in it. I will wear it for the next 40 years and then eventually make a pillow out of it because it's my lucky shirt, damn it. Ooh, and a pike. And a lucky fur pouch, whatever that means. A lucky fur pouch gives me resist frost. It gives me extra carrying capacity. Like, wait, hold on. 36. Maybe that's like carry wait. Oh, wait. It protects coins and your thigh. I don't know if I understand, but okay. All right, more gear. Live stream comes up that doesn't make sense. It's almost like people stream on TikTok too. Personally, I don't know why anybody watches shorts. I think shorts are just awful. Um, so like, you know, oh, there you are. Cavian, oh, so they're, they're like bird people. Oh, you have a pretty hat. Feathered humanoid creature that has feathers of a raven, often inanimate, uh, they often imitate 
what they hear like a parrot. Oh my god, that would be annoying as hell. You're fighting somebody and you'll be like, Stand down! Blah, 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 blah. Hey, look, a bone knife. And then they're just like, Stand down! <laughs> or whatever. So can I butcher it now that I have a knife? Hey! Bird bones. Feather. It's a magic ingredient. Crafting benefits, it gives intelligence. I wonder if these guys will be playable at some point. Also, I'm pretty sure Bone Knife would let me craft, but I want to break it down to get smithing. There we go. I now have one level in weapon smithing. Hey. What does this do again? Oh yeah, it's a taunt. Okay, well, let's vamos. But yeah, if, if I get the opportunity, I, I would in fact enjoy uh, streaming on both YouTube shorts and YouTube longs. I think that's just everybody wins kind of deal. All right, uh, that's kind of a long distance. Let's go to the river. I don't die of thirst. Go to the Dwarven Fort. And go, crap, where in the world was the... There's the smith. Let's go here and see if we can't do some crafting. Yeah, no, this I, I don't know how many of you um, watched this when I uploaded the, f or, or played it the first two times, but this has increased in so many ways. Okay, so any metal, and then I could add a magic ingredient to make a metal knife. But um, what I would like to do is I would like to make iron ingots. Look how many days this takes. Currently we're on day 15. I do not want to do TikTok nor InstaLive because I don't think I would feel comfortable putting my business on a meta property or a uh, TikTok. I, I do not enjoy... I, do, I don't like the way TikTok promotes content within TikTok. I think that it is toxic and an unhealthy work culture. We're also in an ad break at this exact moment, so I'm going to go take a piss. I uh, love the content. You're going to go meet your brother. Yep, well, you have a good night, man. We'll see you later, dude. Cheers, man. So that's the, the reason I don't do anything on TikTok at all even though I literally could just mirror my YouTube shorts to there, is because I think that platform sucks donkey balls. I, I will be right back. All right, um, I'll say, I, I think that platform sucks Winnie the Pooh's balls. Now I can't go to China either. Anyway, I, I'll be back in like a few seconds. See how he bites off the shell to get at the nut? Ah! Is that what you're saying? Um. <laughs> Jeez! For everyone! Over here, he has a sword! 
but yeah, that that's why I, I I won't do anything on TikTok because I frankly it's a unique system. I know this. I, I, I know a lot of streamers who are just like, I will put my content wherever there is the ability to put content there. I will put the stuff that I make on platforms that I am okay with using myself. If I am not okay with using that platform, I don't want to make or I don't want to um make my audience go there either. So let's uh, mess around with this a little bit. So I need a magical ingredient. Crafting benefit. So this will do what? Adds resist death to armor. Okay, but I'm not making... I could put... Fe Ooh, hold on. So if I click this, it tells me what available resources I have. Cobra tongues give me plus two nature damage. All right, let's craft. All right, so I've now made plus one dexterity knife, which is way more valuable than something else. Let's just make some knives. Yeah, I um. I deleted my Facebook account, and I have absolutely zero plans to ever have another Facebook account. I also, along with that delete action, can I do multiple of these at a time? Let's see. Doesn't look like it. Oh well. Um, alongside of that, I also deleted, oh, just leveled up. Ooh, I can make short swords now. Look at this. But um, alongside of deleting my Facebook account, I deleted all of my meta accounts, and I don't ever want to make one again, and obviously I would have to make one again to do that, and I I don't want to step back into that world. I mean, I'm living in a reality of, like, deleting social media services I don't use and don't feel the need to use. So, yeah, I'm not, I, I, I don't honestly think that it's worth me putting stuff on those platforms. So let's do this. Let's make a... Cobra Tongue Short Sword. Let's see what we get out of this. Copper Short Sword of the Cobra. Mm. Well, that's a very basic look at the crafting system, if nothing else. Let's see if we can level this up a little bit more. You had Meta block my emails so they could not keep shadow profiles on you? Meta block? How do you get Meta to block your emails? Does this game have an end game? No, it does not currently. There, That is planned for 1.0 of early access, which is on his roadmap. Victory conditions, basically. Currently, it's just a persistent sandbox with permadeath. But uh, the game's also developing pretty damn quickly, so. And uh, if you want to find the roadmap, it is uh, right. Where was where was the roadmap post? Um, roadmap to 1.0, which he posted 25th of January. Um, at the time, he was at version uh, 6.2. And he's now up to 6.5, which just added Mushroom Men. And um, 1.0 is going to add story and victory conditions. Um, the thing I'm really curious about is wars and conquest and settlement management. Those are the two things that I'm really curious about. I also really hope he gets the family system and stuff in by then. But so yeah, these are the 100% going to be in by 1.0. And then these are the, the core features slash optional content he wants to get to around the edges. Uh, you can just, so there's three different difficulty modes. There's um, the intended difficulty, which I'm playing on, where uh, if you die, you die, but you can play a new character in the same world and, like, find other characters that were related to your old character. Um, so that's interesting. And also find, like, 
places and things that you did damage to. So basically, like, the world keeps going. Then there's um, like the heart. There's a like a true roguelike hardcore mode where when you die, the world gets deleted. And then there is a like easy mode where when you die, you drop all of your stuff and you can go find your body basically. So like you die, you go back to the last I think town, like neutral point of interest you were at. So last town. You don't like Iron Man bullshit again? If you want to try it, there is a demo. Um, and there also is workshop content, and the modability of this game is pretty crazy already. The modability for the first one as well was fantastic, which was, I think, maybe the, the best feature about it, was the ability to mod it. You would play the standard where you play another character? Yeah, I mean, like, it, it's it's a neat little... Oh, shoot, I can make cleavers now. Oh, I need wood for that. Interesting. I need a wooden plank to make a cleaver. I can also make uh, bone spears. I can make bone knives. What is this? Just like a crafting thing, I would guess. Let's go make a bird bird bone knife. Oh, I'm out of stamina. That's funny. All right, accept that. All right, we're gonna. Go speak with this lad. Be like, hello. Can we trade with you? Do you want to buy my stuff? Actually, no, I'm not I'm not gonna sell them my stuff because like obviously they can make this stuff here. So like actually look at these knives I've been making are not actually that valuable. Yeah, we're gonna go elsewhere to sell this stuff. Instead, I will simply sleep. Get all my fatigue gone and whatnot. We got 420 food, nice. Let's leave them out. Um, does the world generation end up being super di different? So I, I showed the world gen at the beginning of the stream. It's kind of like Dwarf Fortress Light. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll show you why I say that this game is like heavily inspired by adventure mode. Um, if I, to those of you who haven't seen this before, this is quite literally a very, 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 very simple version of Legends. Now, a lot of these features aren't in the game um, yet, but these people will be able to give you quests. You can look at their family trees and just by clicking on all of this stuff and jumping to it. So like this person, may may maybe like at some point, this person gives me a quest to go kill this person. And then I find this person and then they tell me to do something else. So like the questing system the developer has like mapped out for this game is like really cool. Are there any super bosses? I don't know. I haven't made a tan game. Um, I mean, how many hours do I have in this game total? Uh, um, I have eight hours in this game total. I played a couple hours when it first came out. I played a couple hours, uh, about an hour uh, after the second big patch, and this is my third time playing it. So I don't know. I've never made it to end game. Did generate, but uh, as far as world gen goes, um, world gen gives you the layout, right? This is the layout for this world that I have. This is a medium sized world. There's small ones which are like the size of this island, and then there's like ones that are like triple the size. Then it like lays out all of the settlements, the points of interest, which you can't see, and then connects them all with roads. Um, and then it runs time forward, and you get these very, 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 very simple kind of histories on each individual character, as well as then the known locations. Um, the heck? That's. Huh. I managed to break the UI briefly. Um, but yeah, we don't have bounties yet. I don't actually know if the bounty system is in the game yet. What's that icon? Oh, that's where I am currently. You are here. Neat. Um, and then this is my home. This is where I'm from. Um, so at some point, once bounties end up in here, this is going to get really interesting. Um, also... Worth noting that if I look at the roadmap, one of the reasons I've jumped into this is because I'm going to be playing this again when the next patch comes out. Because when I look at the roadmap to 1.0, um, adventuring parties is coming in in the next up in like the next major update basically. So they're going to be adding parties um, because currently we're at version 6.5. So I guess when version 7 comes out is when we'll be getting adventure parties. So and there will probably be some smaller patches before then. Um, he. Developer says that'll be approximately March. Uh, we invite you to 
to join our adventurers and use their services and equip them uh, with better gear and use them as mules to carry our resources. Yeah, uh, but the one that I'm really looking forward to is this one. We can invite our capture beings to work in towns. Uh, this part of the game is not meant to add too much micromanagement. It's meant as a way to offer, uh, a way to lead our settlement and be conquer and, and conquered settlements in the next stage of a more macro level stuff. So yeah, that, that's what I'm really curious about. It's basically like kind of Kenshi-esque town building and town features. I mean, you can, you can build a settlement right now. Uh, you just can't really do anything with it aside from farm. So. Uh, why they made this game called so it seems nothing like the first one. Um, did you play the first one? Because this game reuses a lot from the first one. Um, as in a lot of abilities, uh, a lot of progression. Um, it is this, it is a similar game is I think the best way to explain. It does have the same theme. I mean, it, it also takes place in the same world. Uh, I don't know where it takes place in the timeline, but Solash 1, you are a, like, dead elder god who's been cursed to hell, which is Earth, or whatever this planet is called. Um, and then your goal is to exterminate everything and become an elder god again. The gist that I've gotten from reading blogs of this game is this is like... You're in that world or a different area in that world before those events so you're building up that world basically so i it, why is it called soul ash 2 because it is a natural progression from the first one with a lot of different mechanics but i don't know i i won't be able to say for certain until i see what the actual victory conditions are but it is if you played the first one it is very similar in a lot of ways and having played the first one, it's like, okay, so this basically fixes all of the things that I didn't like about the first one. Awesome, let's go. So you finished the tutorial, Mania Coax? Speaking of world generation, I've started doing advanced world generation tutorials on YouTube for Dwarf Fort. Let's go to this cave. Uh, actually, you know what? I'm not going to do this cave. I'm going to go to my hometown. Let's go here so I don't die of thirst. We're running out of food. I've made it home. Hello, mushroom friends. I need somebody to to, to sell stuff to. Trade goods. E. Kenshi 2 was announced, like, correct me if I'm wrong, a long time ago. <laughs> like, that's nothing new. All right, well, I will trade all of that. What do these do? I'm kind of terrified of the concept of eating a paralyzing mushroom, but it is food, so I'll buy it. Buy 30. I think I can also just pick these random orange mushrooms off the ground because my family grows them. I can store stuff up here. They looted everything from the goblins just to tell, uh, to, 
They looted everything from the goblins to tell just like I do in RP. Oh, I mean, what do you mean to tell? <laughs> like uh, just because they could kind of thing? Yeah, you. That's that's one of the main mechanics of this game. You can in fact die of old age. Um, I am eleven, which is very young, and uh, mushroom people live to like eighty. I've aged up one year in the how long have I been playing today? Two hundred and twenty-eight minutes of the current session. Although a lot of that was like generating the world initially. So yes, you do age up. Those are hills. Semi-acrid, rainy. I kind of want to see... Oh, what's that? I think the high fantasy difficulty setting makes you immortal, though. I could be mistaken, though. I'm going to wait until the evening. Get better line of sight. Oh, what's that? Mushroom. I found a glowing mushroom. Is that a magical ingredient or what? Might be edible. Crafted with games uh, four times glowing mushroom spores. Mm. funny the, the 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 discussions here really kind of sound like uh dwarf or, or read like dwarf fortress discussions you're lost there fella it's like very simplistic rpg stuff mycelium thread bug shells my copper around Ooh, that's like a better version of my current shield let's sweet let's swap these two it's got resist frost on it. This has resist electrical and acid. Cool. I did see some noise over here. What are you? It's a larva. It's dead now. Oh, I think I sold my knife. Oh, it's a, it's an owlman. No, I didn't. I can, in fact, salvage stuff. Just picked up another knife. This place seems like a hoot. I'd be willing to bet that's a thing that would get added to a video game like this. Is that what you're saying? Um. <laughs> In regards to curses that make you age faster. I know that necromancy is something that the developer wants to add. It would be kind of cool if, like, you could play a bunch of characters in this. I don't know if this is a thing that's going to get added, but it would be really neat if you could play a bunch of characters in the same world and then, like, make a character that learns necromancy or is a necromancer or whatever, depending on whether or not it's a class or something, um, and then go resurrect your old dead characters. That'd be really cool. Then have a party of your own, like, warriors. That'd be neat. Well, this isn't even a fair fight. Let's just leave the map. Why are the Owlmans angry? Because I just stole their stuff. Let's go check out this troublesome location. Something that's a little bit more challenging. I'm out of water. I need water. My uh, mushroom man needs to hail hydrate a bit. Can you do that in DF? In theory, yes. That 
hurt. I'm going to go invisible and run the fuck away. <laughs> eh. Shit. Might be dead. Run, little mushroomman. Can't even see what's shooting at me. I think I'm dead, chat. The music stopped, maybe not. All right, so can't do troublesome encounters yet. Got it. <laughs> Whew. Wait, that was a that was a close call. <laughs> um. <laughs> I'm not a child. You're a child. I'm an adult. Mushroom people just are adults at the age of 10. Just because your human mental constructs makes you think that I'm a child, I'll have you know I am an absolutely fully aged, happy, beautiful mushroom man. Okay? <laughs> I am Grumpo Spore Man Slippery Milk Cap, age 11. A wise elder shroom, even. Young adult shroom, if you will. We have the internet in our brains. You pesky, slow-aging humans wish you could have. I don't know where I'm going with this. Anyway. <laughs> Can I... So stop calling me a child. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, I'm coming. It's, it's whatever. <laughs> what is this? Big. Grumpo Spore Man is an adult, I'll have you know. Yeah, and, and the reason I, I, I say that I'm clearly an adult is because when you start playing as a human, you start at, like, age 19. So. Clearly, I'm an adult. I wonder if I can see the beach. I'm curious. I just realized I've never walked to the beach, so I'm just going to walk this way and see if I run into a beach. Is mushroom wine a thing in game? I have no idea. Although people do say blood for the blood god, so I can tell you that much. Oh, are we talking about, like, in the credits? I actually need to um, remove a bunch of things from the credits. I've stopped um, adding YouTube members to the credits of videos. I did that around the time I started streaming. Um, and the reason for that is people have been gifting memberships. And so I have two choices. I can stop um, giving people YouTube members... Uh, let's just go finish this. I can stop pe giving people YouTube... Uh, I could stop giving YouTube members um, space in the credits, or I have to give every single Twitch sub I have space in the credits. Um, it was an incentive because, like, initially to try and get people to become YouTube members, but no, I, I've stopped doing that. So I actually need to remove you then, so thanks for telling me. <laughs> if you're still in the credits. Because, like, now that people can just gift them, like, it, it's, it's nice, I, I'm not complaining, but the number of... YouTube members I have has inflated quite dramatically, so it it's something that I, I put out a heads up for uh, in a state of the channel a little while ago, and I also posted about it. Some, I can't remember. I made a YouTube post about it um, a while ago, but yeah. And I removed all the ones I was aware of. Yeah, and I appreciate you for it, so thank you. Because I, I think it's, like, unfair for me to have to, you know, 
me to give YouTube members a benefit that I don't, that I just directly don't for like something on Twitch that costs more money. Because at the time it was like just kind of a, an alternative to Patreon basically, right? But now that I stream there's on YouTube as well, there's a lot more reason for people to do some, for people to join that. Hey, I can actually do damage to these fucking guys now. That's awesome. Boink. Just jump past you. She'll bonk you back. Bye. Let's, uh, go invisible. Rest, rest. Hash Yolo Swag Jesus six nine four two zero. Still huh? love all your YT stuff. It's a funny thing. Work. Thank you very much for the second month. Welcome back. Yeah, I got uh, a bunch. I've got a list of a couple tutorials I got to make tonight too. So. There will be more YouTube stuff up tomorrow. I've leveled up. Bunch of foxes. Let's jump around you. I've leveled up quite a bit, if you can't tell. So can I do this right here? Yes, I can, I think. Neat, I can just like stand here and make bone weapons. Cool. If I did the ladder and put all subs and members. Long enough that I'm not going to do it. It's less of a how long would it take to like make. It's not It's not a matter of how long would the credits take in the video. It's I would need to keep an active document of three different locations of subs. And YouTube and their behind the scenes UI is already Good evening, horrific Can't stay for long, keeping track of numbers like that. New game. Cheers, Nuclear Sneeze. Good to see you as well. Thank you very much for the 15th month. Welcome back. Checking to get a round of beers for Bulls of Zafoy as well as Nuclear Sneeze. Um, it's less of a how long would they take and more of a I would need to maintain a list of Twitch subs, YouTube subs, or YouTube members, and patrons. And also on top of that, make sure that I'm not just getting doubles and... A lot of Twitch subs and now YouTube subs are gifted. And a lot of gifted subscriptions, it's great when people get gifted subscriptions, but let's be honest, are not somebody who's always going to continue it. So I would have to update that list daily because I gain and lose like 30 subscribers per stream that I stream on Twitch. So the the, the credits would change daily. Um, so no, I've gone back to just... The, the credits are just Patreon, or should just be Patreon, unless I've missed one, which apparently I did. <laughs> no, no, there is no relevant APIs for this. It's, it is not a trivial issue uh, to add Twitch subs, and YouTube members are awful. Uh, as, well, I mean, they're great. I love you guys, but the the UI on the back end for YouTube is terrible. Um, and like at the very least, Twitch, I could daily just download um, the, uh, what, what's it called? The file that just like has the list. Um, and it, and it gives you the start and end date and I could put that into a document and then like copy those. So Twitch wouldn't be too bad, but I would still have to do it for every single video. YouTube, there is no way to download a CSV link, a CSV file. Um, a lot of people use real names. So you have to click through to the channel to see their YouTube name. Cause it gives you the real name, not the YouTube. I mean, it's fucking so I, I will stick to just one platform, which is, you know. The reason I gave it to the YouTube sub, the, the YouTube members initially was because there was no actual benefit to it. Because I'm not going to lock videos behind being members only. That's stupid. I'm not going to do that. Um, and there was no, like, actual material benefit for subscribing. It's not even like, YouTube doesn't even give you ad-free viewing if you become a YouTube member. It's ridiculous. So, like, there's no material benefit for the person giving me money. So I put it there as a material benefit. But now that I stream and you get emotes, there's actually a material benefit to a degree. So 
I don't know. Let's kill the last of this. Isn't there, there's gotta be a chest around here somewhere. There it is. Moonlit moss and a thorn. Can I? Crafting upgrade. Interesting. So to upgrade my ceremonial dagger, I, I need more copper ore, or I, I need a copper ingot. I only have one. Quartz. Oh, oh, I see. Do I just put? Oh, hold on. Let's let's um just grab this unspent point real quick and go throw that into intelligence and run to the edge of the map. I want to go see something. I don't know why I'm facing backwards and running, but I am. Also, speaking of interesting games, um, Cogmine's next major update is adding um, a lot of quality of life stuff. So I might be able to play Cogmind chat room. And I'm very excited about this prospect. Like very excited. because they are adding zooming in and zooming out and scaling UI. So I am ecstatic. I need to unequip it, Un unequip it. I think I might need to unequip it, let's see. Why can't I upgrade it? Hmm. That's kind of sad. Um, let's just re-equip this. Uh, jump over to here and go to upgrade. I just want to mess around with upgrading an item real quick. Oh, do I need the same items to upgrade it? If I unequip that. Or is it just not upgradable? Might just not be upgradable. Can't upgrade my fanny pack sets. Oh, maybe, maybe I need to, I guess, learn leather working to be able to get that sort of stuff. Ask for directions. Do you have a tanner? Leather work. The sandbox, endgame state you've seen, you've seen with Kenshi, etc. I mean, I mean, like, it's that and retiring, right? Which is, like, the Dwarf Fortress one. The other one for Dwarf Fortress, where you could die of old age. Actually, you know, I, I do wonder, can an adventurer in Dwarf Fortress die of old age? And has anybody ever lived long enough as an adventurer to die of old age? <laughs> Can trade this skill by crafting or upgrading or salvaging. So I, I guess I need to salvage leather armor pieces. Learn basic leather crafting. Well, nope. all right. I mean, isn't life the ultimate adventure, though? 
Let's trade with you. I'll sell you my fancy items that I don't want. The concept of making thread out of, out of mycelium is hurting my brain a little bit. All right. Sweet. So chat room, it's 2 p.m., which means I've been streaming for five hours. And I have some real life stuff I got to do today. I got to go to the pharmacy and pick up my meds. I got to um, meet up with somebody later tonight. Meeting up with a, uh, somebody from chat, actually. Uh, and uh, I've got a few other things I got to get done today um, in the real life variety. And I have a bunch of tutorials I need to make. So I kind of wanted to just check in with this game more than anything before I actually um, call it for the day. There's something else I'd like to show you just for those of you who missed it. Um, I'm just going to create a new world because I want to show you guys world gen for the people who haven't seen it. If you create a new world, I created a world called Hello World. I'm going to call this Blurth because it's Earth, but like with BL at the beginning. Um, and I'm going to say make this one into big. And I'm going to say many sieves. And I'm going to say randomize. So when you hit randomize, it gives you your map layout, your like your world layout. And also the the the, the like the settlement locations. So that's how this game does like your base world gen. These areas that aren't reachable, you can just, it loops. So you can walk, so you can walk off the top and pop out the bottom. You can walk out the right and pop out on this side like that. And so let's call this Blurth. We will raid somebody, so don't just run off. I mean, you can if you want. Um, and then you tell it how long you want it to progress and then you go, go. And it will just generate you that many years worth of history. And it slows down just like it does in Dwarf Fort. That's crazy. So yeah, that's, I, I, I think, a pretty interesting, like, detail about this game. Um, so I could tell it to progress another five years. Because it def goes to 100 by default. Let's say, let's do another 10. More roads appear. The game actually lags quite a bit. And then, you know, and you can, like, confirm if you want it. Or you could just, you know, cause the apocalypse. And this is the ones that we were playing in today. So, I just kind of wanted to show you guys that because I thought that that was, like, a bit that some of you may have wanted to see. But if you're interested in trying this game out, there is a demo for it. Uh, he does he does update it quite frequently. Um, I think that this game is already worth it purely because of the mod support, which is identical to the first game and... Fantastic. The first game's mod support was excellent. It runs at its own engine. It has a mod editor. You can like edit assets and like all kinds of crazy shit. Um, you can create your own um, encounters for the like, like you know those uh, points of interest with little question marks? You can create those and just straight make them. And there's like mods in the workshop where you can download more of them already. So there's also a mod in the workshop that like, like quid quadruples the amount of experience you get for everything. So if you just want to see end game pretty quickly, you can do that too. Um, so it's worth looking into it. Try the demo if you're interested. And uh, I want to play more of this. I will probably play a lot of it whenever it hits 1.0. Um, until then, I'll check in on it periodically. So I'm probably not going to play it again for a little bit, at least until a, a patch or two drops. But uh, we will be checking in with that game uh, periodically. So, And I think I'm going to do two things. I'm going to edit this VOD down to about 30 minutes and check it up on the YouTube channel. Uh, and the, the rest of it will go up onto the VOD channel, for those of you who are interested. Also, um, I want to shout this out again because I think it's fascinating. Uh, to those of you who are like me and don't like... Uh, you, you did just catch the tail end of the stream. For those of you who are like me and do not like uh, big tech...